On day one, I spawned in as a warden bee in my skulk flower fields. My sweet little bees, go and collect pollen for our hive. Anything for the colony. Man, being a bee is amazing. But as I said this, a creature began to emerge from a dark, scary cave, revealing it was a giant bear beekeeper. The warden bees, finally! Oh no, the colony is under attack. I began to race through the skulk flower fields, trying to get back to my queen safely, but he was chasing close behind. What are you doing? Don't lead him to the hive. In my panic, I didn't listen, but before I could make it inside, the bear hit me to the ground. No, the queen. Yes, there it is. I watched as he slashed right through our beehive. With all of you little warden bees, I will be made all of your precious skulk honey. He ran off as I hurried inside of our home. On day two, I looked around the hive's interior. Everything was in ruins. Queen, where are you? Uh, that evil bear took our queen and the other bees. Without her, our entire colony will perish. No, we have to save her. You're going to die. When I got outside of the hive, I saw a path the bear left behind and began to follow it. But because of this, I recklessly got trapped. Ah! I looked around and realized I was now stuck in a giant spider's web. And on it was a large tarantula. Someone, please help! Hello, my new dinner. Whoa! Is that a warden bee? A little flower creature? Please help me fast! Uh, I don't know. I could, but it'll cost you. Yes, fine. I'll do anything. He quickly pulled me out of the webs just as the tarantula went to bite. Get back here! Follow me! I quickly followed the flower with the large tarantula on our tails. Thankfully, we made it through a small crack just in time. I can't even fight a spider. How am I supposed to stop a bear? Ah, you be forced the beekeeper, don't you? Yeah, going after him is a death sentence. What? Why? I had no choice but to follow the plant as he went deeper into the forest. On day three, I followed the flower until reaching a field full of his other flower kind. Whoa, I had no idea living flowers were a thing. All flowers are living. We could just move and talk. Yeah, right. As we went further in, I quickly noticed how weak everyone here was. What happened? You see that tree right there? We used to live on top of it, bathing in the most beautiful sunlight but we, uh, uh, fell and grew very weak in this shape. Huh. Well, I'll help you all get back up there. If, in return, you tell me everything you know about that bear. Deal. With that, I began searching around the tree until I found a large hole in its trunk. Aha! This way! We were able to make our way up inside its large trunk until we came across a room full of acorns? Why are these here? Suddenly, a loud growl echoed through the air. So, uh, I may have lied. We didn't fall. We were kicked out. By what? I turned back around just in time to see a giant rabid squirrel. Ah! On day four, the squirrel lunged into attack. Ah, stay away! Nice squirrel. Nice squirrel. I don't think that's helping. As I said this, the squirrel knocked me out of the tree onto one of its branches. Ouch. I looked up and along the branch was a strange skulk stinger. Is that from another warden bee? The squirrel came running along the branch towards me, but I went up and collected the stinger. Because of this, I became much stronger and now had a much larger bee stinger. I gained five more hearts and my senses began to change. I was now 
somewhere else. And in front of me was a strange looking flower, one larger than I had ever seen before. What is this? this. But then my vision was brought back to the tree. Whoa, the squirrel was about to reach me, but I quickly used my new stinger to unleash a sonic sting, causing him to fall off the branch. Whoa, I could do that? Ha, not so scary now, are you? With that, I reached the top of the tree, which revealed a breathtaking view like none other. The flower people looked much more healthy and happy as well. Okay, so I don't know much about Boris, but I know he's very deadly and where he goes to rest. Follow me. On day five, the flower and I journeyed to a plains clearing where I saw a large beekeeper site. All around, weak warden bees worked in the field and would all go towards a den in the center. The queen must be in there. Wait, Ooh, what are you doing? I quietly buzzed through the fields and into the den only to see a horrifying sight. Machines were everywhere, processing the resources out bees collected and turning it into skull honey. This is awful. There above it all was the queen bee trapped in a cage. There you are. My little warden bee, you shouldn't be here. That bear, he will return soon. I'm not leaving before I get you out. I flew around her cage looking for a weak spot. There, with my new power, I tried to break it open, but it didn't work. And with one more hit, a loud ringing sound rang. Oh no. You found one of the warrior's lost fragments? I guess so. And when I grabbed it, I saw a vision. One showing a flower? Yes, that's it. Young Fozo, listen. There's only one way to save us all. You must find the rest of the warrior's fragments. And when you do, you will be able to find the flower of lost skulk. It's legendary pollen can create a skulk hive like no other. One that can unleash a power never seen before. What? kind of power. But before she could answer, Boris burst into his den. Go now. You're our only hope. I knew I had to listen to her and flew out before the bear saw me. On day six, I flew far away from the beekeeper's fields, and it didn't take long for me to see that my new flower friend was being chased around by a girl? I want to pick the flowers. They're so cute. Hey, I charged in and stung her immediately. Ow! <gasps> a bee! Ugh. Thanks for the help. Yeah, no problem. Little guys like us gotta work together to stay safe. With that in mind, I found a safe spot for us to start building a base. I went around the area, pollinating nearby flowers and gathering resources to construct my own honeycomb home. It wasn't a full hive yet, but it'll do. Then I noticed my flower friend had built himself a flower pot home as well. You're staying with me? You helped my people, so it's only fair that I stay until I can return the favor. By the way, my name is Sonny. Nice to officially meet you, Sonny. I then went out in search of any clues on the warrior fragments, when suddenly, ah, I nearly dodged back to avoid being crushed by a man. Hey, that's the girl from before. Yeah, yeah, I got the sandwiches, the sodas, and the deep dark honeycomb. I know how much you love your honey, huh? Yeah, well, not anymore. I hate these. A deep dark honeycomb? That must be another warrior fragment. I have to follow them. On day seven, I followed the couple to a cute beachside picnic area. Aw, they're on a date. The boyfriend began setting up as he put down the picnic basket. Okay, the deep dark honeycomb is in there. I carefully flew low to the ground to avoid being spotted and made it to the basket safely. But as I try to push it open, uh, ah, it's too heavy. Did I just hear buzzing? I ducked behind the basket as the girl began to look around. I gotta be more careful. But how am I gonna get in that basket? Hey. 
huh? I followed the voice coming from behind a watermelon and found two ninja flies? What the? Seems we're all after the same thing. These people's delicious, delicious food. Yeah, but I don't want all of it. Well, you're in luck. We are the ninja flies, masters of food thievery. We can all work together to accomplish both our goals. If you distract the humans, we will open the basket. All right, but why can't you distract them? We're flies. Who's scared of flies? Yeah, good point. You have yourselves a deal then. I flew out of hiding and headed towards the couple. Here goes nothing. I buzzed directly in between the two of them as they both screamed, Ah! A bee! On day eight, the couple began to panic. Oh, come on. I'm not that scary. The chaos created the perfect opening for the ninja flies. Go, go, go. The two flies latched onto the basket and forced its lid open. Yes, they jumped inside as one of the humans ran straight towards me with a fly swatter. That's it. Stay back. Whoa, no. Ah! I tried to fly around to dodge his attack, but he struck me dead on. On, sending me straight into the basket! Ow! That hurt! Looking around at my new surroundings, I saw the inside of the basket was full of food. And there, amongst it all, was the deep, dark honeycomb. Bingo! I started to make my way towards it, but the ninja flies jumped out at me. I don't think so, pal. What the? You guys are betraying me? Yeah, what did you expect? We're flies! All we care about is food. The fly ran into attack, and it wasn't holding back. With their combined hits, I was losing fast. Oh no! Thankfully though, one of them hit me straight towards the honeycomb. Oh no! Stop him, you idiot! They came after me, but I grabbed a chunk of the honeycomb just in time and felt myself upgrade once again. I gained five more hearts and grew even stronger, but my vision began to fade again. Ah! I don't think I'll ever get used to that. I noticed that I was back in the place from my previous vision. I walked down a cave tunnel that led me to a dangerous dungeon entrance. And as I was about to enter in, ah! you, uh, you seek the flower of the lost skulk within this temple. Yes. Uh, yeah, I do. Uh, please take it from me. Entering here is a death wish. Suddenly, the warden bee just died. What? How? It was then that my vision returned to the picnic basket. The skulk flower is that dangerous? In the middle of my thought, the ninja flies were still coming right at me. However, in my newly upgraded form, I was able to shoot out hot skulk honey, which stopped their attack. I can't move. But this honey, it's delicious. Well, enjoy it, I guess. I escaped through the open basket to see that the humans had left the picnic. Thank goodness. Getting to that flower is not going to be easy. I wonder where the other warden fragments are. Huh? What's that? I flew around the corner to see a baby fox trembling with fear. Hey there, are you all right? Ah, you work for that evil bear. Leave me alone. Boris? Wait, no, I don't work for him. On days 11 to 12, I began to chase after the fox through the forest. They were just a baby but clearly knew the forest inside and out. Hey, I just want to talk. It wasn't long until we stumbled into an area that was almost completely destroyed. Whoa, what happened here? The baby fox had stopped in the center and just looked so sad. That horrible, horrible bear is what happened. He came here and destroyed my home using your skulk honey. I, I lost my mom and pops. 
Wait, he was using our honey? How? Look, I'm sorry. I promise that I'm trying to stop that bear. He's using our honey against my hive's will. The fox wordlessly nodded and seemed to trust me, but they were still so sad. We returned to the picnic, and I found some leftover food to feed them. Thanks. So, I can see you're out searching for the Warden Bee's fragments, right? Yeah! You know what those are? Yes! I love learning all about the forest animals around me. If you already have the stinger and the honeycomb, the remaining three pieces are the tendril antenna, the ancient wings, and the buzzing heart. Whoa! You're more knowledgeable than I thought. What's your name? I'm Amber. All right, Amber. I think I have an idea. On days 13 to 14, Amber and I returned back to my base, where I immediately started building a cozy little home for them. I promise you that I'll find your parents and reunite you guys. Thank you. But that bear, he's always been the forest's largest predator. And now he's even more dangerous. And your skulk honey, it's changing him for the worse. Yeah, that's not good. Good news though, I actually know where the next fragment is. The tendril antenna should be in a beehive just south of here. Another beehive? Then that's just where I need to go. As I prepared to leave my base, I noticed our home was blooming with even more vibrant flowers. Yeah, being half flower has its perks. Then as I looked out of my base, I spotted another warden bee. But they looked scared and flew off in a hurry. What could they be running from? On days 15 to 16, I tracked the bee as he flew into a snowy forest. Great. Where did he go? I then heard rustling in nearby bushes. Uh, hello? I crept forward until I saw the warden bee. Oh my, another warden bee? Finally. I've been on the run since our colony fell. You've been on the run? From what? Suddenly, emerging from the path were two massive tundra wolves. Not just one, but two. Look how lucky we are. Oh no! We both darted away, flying through the forest as fast as we could. But they were gaining on us. The wolves slowly began to walk forward, ready to kill. But then, bursting from out of the tree line was Boris. He took down both of the wolves with one powerful swing. He's stronger than before. This skulk honey, it's doing something to me. It's given me power. Wait, he's using our honey? Quiet down. <sighs> Boris sniffed through the air and came slowly towards our snow pile. But thankfully, he didn't notice us. Ugh, this power changes everything. I will consume all the honey from those bees. And when they can't give me any more, they'll be dead. Our queen, she has to be so weak now. The entire colony won't last much longer. I have to find that other beehive. You're looking for another hive? I just saw one a while back. Uh, come with me. On day 17 to 18, the bee brought me over to a beautiful lakeside. There in the center was a small island with a single tree and hanging from it was the beehive. The tendril antenna has to be in there. Huh, I wonder why they call it that. I split up with the other warden bee and made my way to the hive. Once inside, I saw that there was an entire bee town. And wait, all of them were in business suits? Some were even driving cars. Come on, I'm trying to get to work. I'm a busy bee, you know. As I got deeper into the hive, I saw that every single bee was in their homes just watching TV. This is not right. You being here is not right. I looked up. And there on her throne was the colony's queen bee. And coming out of her throne were power lines, all connected to the tendril antenna. Oh, 
Oh, I see. Queen, I'm here for that antenna. It's rightfully mine. Do not talk to me with such a demanding tone. Without this antenna, this city would have no more power. The TVs are all us busy bees need now, so it is ours. Before I could react, two policemen bees grabbed me from the side. Ah, hey, let me go. Put him in jail for his disrespect. On days 19 to 21, I was thrown into a honey cell. Ah, hey, let me out. Oh, shut up. I'm trying to watch TV. You guys too? Come on. Huh, they all like that. I turned around to see a prisoner bee. Why are you locked in here? Something real messed up, man. I hate technology. And I miss the beautiful flowers our colony used to enjoy. Wait, that's messed up? To this place, it sure is. I'm willing to do anything to show these bees that the outside world is a far better place than staring at a screen. Anything? Ha <laughs> ha, I love this part. Look. What the? What was that? Put your hands up. What hands? We're bees. He began to attack in frustration, but me and the other bee easily dodged and made it through the open door. Now, the other bee shut it and I used my skull cunny to block the exit. Good one. Now, how are we gonna do this? I think I have an idea, but you're gonna have to trust me. On days 22 to 26, the prisoner bee approached the queen. Hey, queen! What? You? How did you escape? Uh, that doesn't matter. But you can't catch me, though. <laughs> what? Get back in your cell now. The queen flew off of her throne and chased after him, leaving the tendril antenna for the taking. Yes, I seized the opportunity and grabbed it, causing me to upgrade even more. I gained five more hearts and grew into a larger warden bee with a powerful buzz boom. But because I took the antenna, all of the power throughout the entire hive shut off. You. The queen began charging right at me. Oh no. We began to fight. And even though she was just a normal bee, the queen was very strong and had a very powerful stinger. Ah! Thankfully, with my new ability though, I launched her into the wall of the hive, causing it to break open and reveal the outside. Ah, my head. Oh my, this place, it's it's beautiful. Whoa, it looks real. The quality here is way better than TV. This is what I've been trying to tell you. I am so sorry. And Fozo, I owe you an apology as well. We are bees. We belong with nature. I'm truly sorry. I'm just happy I could help you guys see that. On days 27 to 29, I returned to my base and saw a group of warden bees here. They must have followed the one from before, but they all still looked so weak. All right, Fozo, time to get to work. I built them their own warden bee sleeping quarters so that they can all get some rest. The warden fragments are keeping me strong, but not the others. I need to save the queen. Yeah, with her help, we could actually have a hope in finding the flower of lost skulk. No warden bee has ever found it before. Really? Only someone with strong enough senses can. And that's only if they can survive the trials. Did you say trials? That's just what I heard. Huh, good to know. Hopefully we can find it and save our queen before Boris becomes too strong. Just then, I heard a scream echo over our entire ah, base. I'm off course, brace for impact. I rushed out to find a dragonfly splashing in the water outside. No. No, no! I'm never gonna make it to the secret society at this pace. Hey, man, are you all right? That was a major crash. Yeah, my concussions numb the pain. Nothing's gonna stop Master Pilot Ace from getting to the Skyflower Ford. Okay, Master Pilot Ace. What's there? That secret society you were talking about? Yes, exactly! Ooh, yeah! Any insect that they allow to join are granted the ancient wings. Ancient wings? Another fragment. Well, I guess I need to join it then too. On days 30 to 32, Ace brought me to the base of a large intimidating mountain. The Skyflower Fort is just up here. Should be easy enough. 
But just as I started to fly up it, lightning began to strike all around us. Ah! We were both blasted far back because of the impact. Ouch! Yeah, now you see why I crashed earlier? Whoever's part of this society made it super exclusive. Well, they haven't dealt with the warden bee. I began to push onward through the lightning-filled path. And as the lightning struck around me, I used my heightened warden senses to dodge around them. This is too easy. It wasn't long until we reached the mountain summit and there stood the entrance to a grand flower fort. Whoa, we actually made it. This place is beautiful. From the fort emerged a large tarantula hawk. Ah, newcomers. That's right. We're here to join the secret society and claim the ancient wings for ourselves. Very well. It's your funeral. <laughs> the insect pressed the switch that opened the doors of the fort. All right, time to get those wings. So, there is another warden bee out there. Well, he will soon be mine. <laughs> On days 33 to 35, we were led into the council room of the flower fort, where two more imposing winged insects glared down at us. And above them were the ancient wings. All right, which one of you first? Oh, wise and mighty council of the wings, please accept my application into your society. No. What? What? We aren't leaving without a yes. We need those wings. Ah, uh, a warden bee. <laughs> I knew I smelled you coming. You're here seeking the flower of lost skulk, aren't you? Yes, and I'll do whatever it takes to save my colony. <laughs> Follow me. She led us through the fort and into a chamber with a long hallway. And at the end was a golden map. What's this? This map leads to a biome in the clouds. One with trees that are made of pure gold. If there's one thing I would change about this place, it's the trees. And these trees scream. Best of the best. The moth? threw over the map to me. If you go there and bring us back just one simple sapling, the wings will be yours. But beware, the residents there do not welcome visitors. On days 36 to 39, I followed the map and made it to the Golden Cloud Forest. Okay, just gotta get one sapling, no biggie. But as I got close, I spotted goblins flying around the area in golden helicopters. Yeah, I should not stay for long. I quickly went over and started to mine a tree but its leaves are just gold blocks? How am I supposed to get a sapling then? Needing to know more answers, I went deeper into the area. But while I was searching, something blasted me from behind. Ah! I looked around and saw that I was now in a field of dead plants, but in the center hill stood one last golden sapling. Bingo! Before I could run for it though, the attacker revealed himself as a goblin in a fully golden mech. Whoa! No one will be taking our last golden sapling. We cherish it, protect it with all our hearts. I have a feeling this isn't gonna go well. Hey, team, blast him to bits, boys! The helicopters came swooping in and started dropping deadly bombs onto me. Oh no! I was doing my best to avoid the explosions and skillfully use my skull honey to bring one down. Hey, stop that! The mech then charged in and was about to crush me when suddenly Ace came flying in, knocking him to the side. Ace! Yeah, it's me! I'm here to help! On days 40 to 44, Ace and I teamed and using our combined attacks, we pushed the golden goblin mech that gave us an opening to go for the sapling. No, please, it's the only living plant we have left on this 
cloud. Without it, we goblins will have no few to love. Wait, what? Okay, goblin, I have an idea. I quickly flew around the area and using my echo pollen, I was able to bring the surrounding plants more and more back to life. With this, golden flowers bloomed across the entire field. How beautiful. Oh my, the beauty. All the goblins then began to run around and sing. Ring around the roses, a pocket full of posies. I did not expect this from goblins. This is amazing. Thank you. Please take the sapling. Together, Ace and I collected the sapling and flew back to the flower fort. But something was wrong. It had been attacked. There was destruction everywhere. And as we made our way inside, I saw strange claw marks. And the ancient wings were gone. <coughs> the bear, he did this. No, no! On days 45 to 47, Ace went back to base as I snuck my way back to Boris's honey field. But now the place was completely different. Everything was overrun with skulk and my fellow warden bees looked so weak. They couldn't even move anymore. A loud roar echoed from a staircase that led beneath the fields. I followed it, which led me into a room where Boris was. Where is that warden bee? I, uh, I don't know. He roared out in anger again, but this time unleashed a powerful sonic boom that nearly destroyed half of the room. Oh my. Why? These stupid warden bees are on the verge of death. I need another one. Healthy, like him. If you don't know where he is, then you will die. He was about to unleash another roar. I can't just let them die. Hey, I blasted Boris, nearly getting his attention. Ah, my new pet. I don't think so. Quickly, I tried to lead him away. But before I could, his roar sent me crashing into the hallway. Ah! All around me was the skulk honey he had been harvesting from my hive. I flew up angrily and turned to see him stomp into the hallway after me. You will die working here, just like the rest of your colony. No, I won't. On days 48 to 52, Boris began to chase me through the narrow hallway as his massive attacks would destroy his own machinery. Oh, look what you made me do. I tried to fly ahead. And as I did, I saw the ancient wings were being held at the end of the hall. I kept Kept going and even turned to blast him with the sonic boom, but it barely even phased him. Every single year I have to prepare for the horrible winter, gathering enough food to make sure I survive. But your honey, it's given me senses like none other. I'm not only stronger, but faster, and I can hear my prey from miles away. I don't need hibernation anymore! He roared again, hitting me to the ground right in front of the wings. But I was only at one heart. Oh, don't worry. I won't kill you until I've extracted all the honey I can from you. No, you won't. I quickly got up and grabbed the ancient wings, which empowered me again. I gained five more hearts and grew out even larger wings. Boris angrily charged towards me, but I was able to soar up just in time. On days 53 to 56, I exited the tunnel and flew up into Boris's den. There, our queen was still locked in her cage, looking weaker than ever. Oh no, I could still hear Boris's roars coming from below. We have to get out of here. Uh, 
Bozo? With my upgraded form, my attack was now strong enough to break open her cage. Come on, my queen. We have to go. Now, I escorted her out of Boris's den, causing all of the other warden bees to follow us. No, no, it's all that bee's fault. Yeah. I'll use the rest of this honey to heighten my senses even more. And I will find that colony, and I'll take him down once and for all! On days 57 to 59, I made it safely back to base with my entire colony. All of the flowers in my base bloomed and flourished thanks to Sonny. And some of his people were there as well. Look at everything we did! This place looks so much better now! Nice work, Sonny! Now, let's make it even better. I immediately got to work, building more resting quarters for the rest of the Warden Bees. And a royal throne for my queen to overlook us all. Despite everything we've done, all of the bees were still so weak. Boris had really taken his toll on them. It won't be long before that bear finds us again. None of us are strong enough to face him. The lost flower is our only possible answer. Leave it to me, my queen. She then handed me over a skulky looking key. What's this? You are the only healthy one left that's strong enough to do this. I know where the final warrior's fragment is left. Wait, you do? Where? The entrance lies within our old hive, but please be careful, Fozo. Obtaining this piece will be far more challenging than all of the others. <laughs> no pressure, right? I reluctantly flew out towards our old hive, and there it was on the ground, just as broken as before. I was about to enter inside, but then I heard movement behind a nearby tree. Um... Hello? On days 60 to 63, I flew behind the tree to see a pair of foxes? Have you seen our baby? You're Amber's parents. Yeah, I have. She's safe. Oh, thank goodness. Where is she? I directed them to my home. And as they headed off, I went into the destroyed beehive. Everything was still in ruins inside. And I have no idea what I'm even looking for. Just then, the skulk key the queen had given me began to activate. It pointed me towards where the queen's throne once was. And after I cleaned up some of the rubble, I found a button. Pressing it caused the throne to move, which revealed a passageway into a hidden room. Whoa, the queen really kept this place a secret? At the center of the room was a chest, and I used the key to unlock it, showing an empty skulk heart inside. The heart of the buzz. As soon as I grabbed it, I was suddenly pulled away. Ah! Ah! I now found myself on an unfamiliar deep dark island and there was a giant empty heart floating at its center finally someone who wishes to fill the heart whoa what look around this island has been barren for far too long now but if you wish to collect the heart of the buzz and leave this place, you must fill the heart with honey. On days 64 to 68, the large shrub began to dance as they leapt up to a viewing platform, joining a bunch of others. Fill the heart! Fill the heart! Okay. I tried shooting skull honey directly at the empty heart, but nothing happened. How do I even do this? Fill the cauldrons! Around the area, Area were three separate cauldrons connected to the heart. Oh! I began to shoot my skull honey at one, filling it up completely, which caused the heart to partially fill. Yes! But suddenly, a skulk honey monster emerged to face me. What the? Woo! Yeah! Pure entertainment! Woohoo! The monster slid towards me and began launching attacks. Hey, knock it off! I dodged around and made it to the second cauldron, filling it up as well. Okay, just one more. But the monster also grew stronger again and blasted me with another attack. Ouch! I tried to fight back, 
but it just absorbed my attacks. I then looked past to the third cauldron. Wait, I have an idea. Let's hope this works. I unleashed as powerful of a sonic boom as I could right into the monster, which knocked him back and into the final cauldron. As it sank within, the skull honey was absorbed inside of it, filling it up which filled up the heart as well. Yes! The large heart then transformed down into the filled heart of the buzz. We did it! As I looked around, I noticed that filling the heart caused the entire island to come alive with skull honey. The heart is alive! Finally! I approached it and picked it up, causing me to transform into the strongest Warden D ever! I gained 10 more hearts and could now slam into the ground with deep dark energy but then my vision became blurred and i found myself back at the entrance of the dangerous looking dungeon wait this place again why am i here there walking in front of me was my queen what am i doing here it seemed like she couldn't hear me but for some reason my attention was drawn to her crown what Whoa! Ah! in a flash i was back in the old destroyed hive again her crown it's the key to finding the flower of lost skulk on day 74 to 77 i flew through the forest as fast as i could trying to get back to my base when i heard a roar in the distance where are you Oh no, he's getting close to finding the colony. I finally made it back to my base safely and went straight to the queen. There you are, your highness. You did it. You found the heart. Yep. And now, as weird as this might sound, can I borrow your crown? My crown? She was hesitant, but trusted me and tossed it over. Please keep it safe. Yes, of course, my queen. I will. I promise that I, as I touched the crown, I was instantly teleported away. Uh, did Fozo just vanish? Ah! Looking around at my new surroundings, I realized where I was at the entrance to the dungeon from my visions. As I went in, I was met by an ancient chamber. This is it, the trials of the lost flower. On days 78 to 80, I walked forward as a figure on the wall breathed out. The trial of the flower has begun. Suddenly, the room shifted as a row of platforms formed in front of me. Here we go. I began to move across the platform platforms as the spikes above stopped me from just flying over the course i had to leap over the gaps and evade moving saw blades on every platform this is definitely a serious flower whoa finally i made it to the last jump and completed the parkour challenge yes wow that was surprisingly straightforward do other bees really struggle with this the true trial has now officially begun say what now i spun around quickly and there in the chamber was the flower of lost skulk i found you but suddenly, it reached down and tried to bite me? What the? It's alive? I tried to fight back with a blast of honey, which hurt the flower. Oh no, I can't destroy it. I need its pollen. Reveal the beauty of the sun to it. This is the only way. Huh? What does that mean? I then spotted a lever nearby. This must do something, right? The lever caused the ground to shake as it began to lift me and the flower up towards a hole in the ceiling. And the flower of Lost Skull looked very upset about it. On days 81 to 85, the platform continued to slowly rise to the surface while the flower began to unleash a barrage of attacks at me. Ah! It was doing everything it could to take me down. And some of its attacks would even spawn smaller plants that would try and bite me. It was extremely strong and I was only getting lower and lower on hearts. But as I looked up, I saw we were getting close to the surface. Come on, 
Come on! The flower tried to bite me one last time and released a powerful sonic boom with it. But just before it hit me, we broke through the surface, exposing the flower of Lost Skulk to the sunlight. It stopped and froze mid-attack. Did I do it? Then the flower transformed into a large and beautiful Skulk flower, the one I saw in my visions. Yes! I used my abilities to collect all of its pollen, which filled me with a powerful essence stronger than anything I had ever felt before. This is what's going to save my colony. On days 86 to 90, I was getting close to my base when I heard Boris nearby. I can sense you. Oh no, I can't let them find the colony before they're ready. I quickly began to fly away from my base as I crossed his path. There you are. He began to chase after me through the forest and I ducked in and out of the trees. Oh no, stay away. Ah! Wait, that's it. I used my skull cunning and completely covered some of the trees, blocking his path. More power. He obsessed over it and began eating all that he could. It'll make him stronger, but it should distract him for long enough. On days 91 to 94, I quickly returned to base where I saw that Amber's parents had reunited with her. You guys made it. They did, and you found them just like you promised. I then flew up to the queen and returned her crown. I believe this belongs to you. Bozo, look at you. Are you ready to take on Boris? Not quite yet, your majesty. We need to do one more thing. The other bees and I quickly built up a new hive for the colony. And with the lost flowers pollen, I was able to upgrade it into a warrior warden beehive. All of the weakened warden bees now looked strong again. And some even became warrior bees like me. Yes, it worked. Our queen also looked like she returned to her full power. Goodness, my dear Fozo, you did it. You've completely restored the hive. What's the plan now? We fight to defend the colony. On days 95 to 99, I flew outside the new hive just as Boris found our base. He let out a massive roar. All you bees will suffer for escaping from me! Yeah, that's not gonna happen, Boris. Ah, what is the little bee gonna do to me? Bees, defend the hive! Charge! The warrior warden bees went flying out of the hive and began attacking the bear. They were much smaller, but the completed hive empowered them all, making up for it. Ah! What? We had caught him by surprise, but enough! With a powerful roar, Boris began to fight and took out some of the bees. No! He started attacking wildly and even clawed through some of our base. The queen fell back to protect the other bees inside the hive. He's still so powerful. I have to try to take him down. Fozo, no! Everyone, fall back! Hey, you looking for me? On day 100, I was face to face with the giant skulk bear. You are still so weak! You think you stand a chance against my power? I don't think. I know I do. We began to fight as I flew around and kept my distance as he would try to get close and swipe at me with his powerful attacks. I was trying to hit him with everything I had, but he had absorbed so much skulk. With another powerful roar, he knocked me out of the sky. Ah! Just as I said, you're weak and only the strongest survive. And I am the strongest creature there will ever be! Boris hit me again, knocking me down to almost no hearts. Ah! Boris, I may be weak alone, but together with the rest of my colony, we are strong! Now! 
Ow! All of the warden bees together unleash their skulk honey from the hive, sending a massive glob that completely covered Boris. Ah! No! He was held in place, which allowed me to unleash my new deep dark slam, taking out the bear beekeeper once and for all. And with that, our warden bee colony could finally live in peace. On day one, I spawned in as a killer bee, overlooking my entire colony. I watched as all of my people went through the hive, spreading honey and servicing our amazing queen. You. A new killer bee. I think I'll call you Fozo. Just then, our entire beehive began to shake violently. Uh, what's going on? Our hive was burst open and destroyed by a giant killer bear. Oh no. Ah, uh, yes. More of my precious honey. Hibernation is just around the corner, and I will stop at nothing to take it all from you. I watched as my queen bee signaled the other to attack the giant bear. They did their best, but with the bear's brute strength, it was able to swipe most of them out with ease. My people! Bozo, you must take the honey core now. Without it, our colony won't survive. I quickly picked it up and knew that I had to leave if I wanted to save my colony. Oh no, you don't. I flew away with the giant bear sprinting right behind me. On day two, I was being chased by the bear. Because I was still a baby, my wings were very little, making me unable to fly up high. This sucks. Up ahead, I noticed a log lying down, and on it was an opening. Perfect. I have to hide. I flew my tiny wings over and was able to make it inside of the log. Oh, that was close. Am I safe? Just then, the log burst open behind me. Ah! You aren't going anywhere with my honey. Time to run. I started to fly through the log with the bear destroying it more and more. I then reached the other side, but unfortunately, it was over a cliff. Oh no, I'm done for. Knowing I had no other option, I decided to jump. Ah! On day three, I landed far below. Ah! I was surrounded by a dense jungle, not knowing where I was or where to go. I can't believe my colony. It's gone. That bear is pure evil. I was so angry that I threw the honey core right on the floor. Ah! Because of this, it started to glow. What is happening? A tiny honey being then grew from it. Ah! Well, man, it gets corrupted in there. Oh, hello. Hi. I see you were chosen to hold on to my core. Here, let me just... The entity then performed a magical spell, which caused me to glow. Whoa. There you go. I've just given you the power of the core. With it, you could do great things, but you must get stronger first. But how? In time, you will see. Go. Find your special flowers. With them, you will grow to be big and strong. Wait, but before I could ask any more questions, the honey being disappeared. Flowers? What flowers? I was about to pick up the honey core, but out of nowhere, I was hit with a bomb. Ow! Is that precious honey? <laughs> On day four, a weird rat bandit picked up my honey core and started to run. Hey, uh, get back here. I tried my best to catch up, but with its swift movements and acrobatics, he was losing me. I can't lose that core. We ran until he was cut off by a large lake. Rats. Hey, who are you and why did you steal my honey? Oh, me? I am Splinter. I was sent to roam throughout these forests to get as much honey as I could for Thor. Thorn? He must be talking about the bear. That's right. Boss man must hibernate before winter rolls through. And if I help, I'll be right there by his side, eating his scraps. No! Splinter then whistled, which signaled smaller rats to emerge from the bushes of the jungle. Take that little bee out! 
On day five, the smaller rats charged in and began to attack. They hit me with their tiny paws and bit at me every chance they had. My hearts were getting really low and I knew there was no way I could take them on. Stay away from me. I began to fly away from them throughout the jungle until I ran into another opening. Far on the other end of it lied a flower much larger than any I had ever seen. Is that what the honey core was talking about? Out of pure urge, I flew towards the flower and decided to pick it up. Because of this, I gained five hearts and grew in size. Whoa, I feel stronger. And look at my new stinger. There he is. Get him. The rats charged in. But since I was upgraded, I was able to shoot out powerful stinger attacks at will. I was able to take down those rats. Look at me. I did it. Now, time to go make sure my queen is safe. On day six, I was able to make it back to my destroyed colony. I looked around and all I saw was destruction and fire. <coughs> Who is there? Queen, thank goodness you're okay. Our colony, Ozo, it's destroyed. All of our people have abandoned it. That horrible bear. I know, we need to stop him. But first, it's time we build our hive back up. I placed down the flower that I collected and used its pollen to start making a bigger beehive. It's nothing compared to our old place yet, but I know that it will be even better. Whoa, look at you, Fozo. It looks like you found the first of five sacred flowers, the others being the prickly cacti, the burning sunflower, the raging blood tulip, and the underground titan orchid. We can build our colony back up more and more with each one we collect. Well then, I will go and find all of them for our people. Just then, smoke started to emerge from the nearby tree lines. Oh no, a forest fire? I have to go see what's going on. On day seven, I followed the smoke until I reached a spruce forest that was completely on fire. Oh no. My home, my precious lovely wooden paradise. Hey, you, are you okay? No, my ant colony lives in this very forest, but fireflies came through and started burning the entire thing down. Fireflies? What do you mean? Just then, I felt a pinch of heat from behind me. Ow! Behold, the blazing wrath of the fireflies! Oh, they are literal fireflies. The fireflies started to attack. Ah! It shot dangerous fireballs at me, causing me to burn every time that I got hit. I did my best to aim back at it and shoot my new stinger attack but it had far more experience with its range attacks than I did. No! Quick, retreat! The ant signaled me to follow him, and I did. We both were able to run through the small cracks of the forest, escaping the firefly. <laughs> Pathetic! You better run! On day eight, the ant took me deep underground inside of its ant hill. I looked around, and even in here, everything was destroyed. Everyone just looked so hurt. And those fireflies are no joke, man. What made them come here? The ant then brought me over to a room that held an empty pedestal. We used to have a really tasty looking cactus and those fireflies came through and burned everything. Luckily, it survived. But then not so luckily, they decided to take it. Wait, did you say a cactus? I need that. Good luck. Those fireflies aren't just gonna give it to you. I mean, look, now all of us ants don't got a home. What if you guys come live with me? I'm trying to build up my own colony and us colonies have to help each other out, right? The ants all seemed excited and agreed. I quickly brought them all out of their base and was stopped by the main ant. I appreciate you helping out. So I'm gonna help you out. The fireflies live in the desert, not too far from here. My guess, if you find them, then you'll find that cactus you're after. On days 9 to 10, I followed the ant's directions deep within the nearby desert. It didn't take long for me to finally come across a large sand castle. There were loads of fireflies flying throughout it. Well, it looks like I found their home. Score! Okay, Fozo, you got this. I began to sneak my way through, knowing if I alerted any of them, I was done for. Hey, Ralph. Are you worried about that killer bear roaming around lately? What? 
Why would I be? He's hibernating far off in the dark forest miles away. He knows not to come in the desert. Dark forest, huh? Interesting. On days 11 to 12, I made my way higher inside the sandcastle. Okay, I just have to make it to the top. After a few close calls and journeying deep into the Firefly's base, I was finally able to reach the top. And in front of me rested the prickly cacti. I did it. I flew over and collected it, which caused my body to change. I gained five hearts and my wings grew to full size. I bet I can fly like a true killer bee now. Before I could do anything, though, a group of fireflies flew to the top of the tower. Uh-oh. Hey, he's taking the prickly. Get him. The fireflies rushed in and began shooting their fire attacks at me. Okay, time to test out these new wings. I jumped off the tower, and thankfully, I could fly up very high now. I started to leave the desert with the fireflies chasing right behind me. Uh, stop it. I can't get hit by one of those things. I have to find a way to escape. Is that a waterfall? Wait a minute. I have an idea. I flew straight through the water stream, leaving the fireflies behind due to their weakness of water. Woohoo! This isn't over, B! On days 13 to 14, I made my way back to the queen and our hive with my amazing new wings. Fozo, this place looks great, but the... Uh... Where can we stay? Oh, right. I went out and got enough materials to make myself a set of stone tools. From there, I was able to build these ants their very own ant hill on the opposite side of the tree. Perfect. Oh, yeah, this'll do. Thanks. I then placed the prickly cacti down on one of our hills. From it, I began to collect its pollen and used it to further build up our hive. I knew I was going to get bigger, so it had to fit me and our future colony down the line. Bozo, you found another flower, but it's strange. What is? Our people, none of them have come home. Wait, Bozo, do you have the honey core? About that, uh, no, Queen, I don't. I'm sorry, it was stolen from me. That's not good. Without that core, the other bees will never find their way back home. I promise, I will get that honey core back before Thorn gets it himself. You have my word. Another forest down, and from it, more tasty treats, honey, berries, and even you. <laughs> this place is taken care of. On to the next. On days 15 to 16, I was out searching for the honey core thief, Splinter. No! No! What was that noise? I started to follow the screams until I spotted a praying mantis crying. Hey, is everything all right? My life, my passion, it's, it's over. Hold on, what do you mean? My guitar, it's gone. I am so confused. You see, I'm a musician. It's my life's work. I had this wonderful, absolutely perfect guitar. Her name was Shirley, but that's when it happened. This evil, evil bear destroyed my forest, and because of it, I left my guitar behind. Who knows where it is now? You must be talking about Thorn. He destroyed my home too. He's heartless. I saw him talking to a stupid looking rat too. Wait, you did? Suddenly, I had an idea. Hey, how about I help you get your guitar back? And in return, you show me where that rat is. You would do that? Yes, of course. I went out searching for the praying mantis's guitar on days 17 to 18. Uh, begotted bing, I stole the garbage with the zing. Wait, is that singing? I followed the noise until I was brought to a small raccoon bandit camp. Hey, give that to me, it's my turn. Tacos, spaghetti, confetti, enchilada. They have the guitar. Hey, give that back. It's not yours! Oh, looky looky, it's a killer bee. Why would we give this thing to you? We're making sound to the heavens over here! No, you're not. You dare disrespect our soothing voices! Without warning, the raccoons started to attack me. They were pretty fast and clawed at me with their little claws. As we were fighting, one of the raccoons accidentally punched a log. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Hey, Ralph! Did, did, 
Did you hear that? <laughs> I did, Gerald. That sounded like a drum set. Now that is music. From there, both of the raccoons started to punch the log violently. <laughs> hey, that's pretty good. Hey, B, you can have this stupid old useless dumb guitar. We got a new instrument now. Yeah, Ralph, we're going to be total rock stars now. Woohoo! Yeah, rock stars. Uh, thanks. I left and brought the guitar back over to the praying mantis. Whoa, amazing. I would have never found this on my own. Follow me. I will show you that rat cave. On days 19 to 20, the praying mantis and I split up. It didn't take long until I found the rat's cave. This has to be it. You have betrayed us. We had an alliance with your people, you filthy cheat. What you and Thorn are doing is wrong. You're going to destroy everything at this rate. I have to get that honey core. I ran in and caught Splinter's attention. Ha! We meet again. Splinter charged in, but I was prepared. I fought back. And with my new wings and bee sting, I was faster and stronger than ever. How? How did a bee get this much power? The rat wasn't able to keep up with me, and he started to run off. Uh, I'll be back. I was going to follow him, but just then, I noticed the honey core lying on his desk. Yes! I went over and picked it back up. I am never losing you again. Now, I could really start to restore our hive. Hey! Over here! What did Splinter mean when he said you had an alliance? My king made a deal with Thorn and that rat. They wouldn't bother us as long as we reported on where all the other animals were. That's terrible. Thorn is destroying the entire forest. I know. My king, he's gone completely mad ever since our people found this weird blood flower. Now, that's all they care about. Blood flower? The blood tulip. I'm looking for that. Do you think... But before I could finish my sentence, rumbling filled the cave, quickly followed by a loud... Oh no, is that... You gotta get me out of here, man. On days 22 to 26, I quickly freed the mosquito. Okay, we have to leave this cave without Thorn noticing us. If he does, we're toast. Yeah. Splinter, where are you? You better have called me here for a good reason. While he was distracted, the mosquito and I both flew for it, but were quickly stopped by a dead end. Oh no. Oh, well, isn't this a nice, delicious surprise? I think I remember you. Oh yeah? Does destroying my entire colony ring any bells? You need to stop destroying the forest. You're going to kill everything, and there will be nothing left, even for you. Nothing left? Nothing left? I have had nothing all my life. My own crew of bears, the ones I should trust most, turned their backs on me like an outcast. Why? Because I was too big for hibernation. There wasn't enough food. So what did they do? They abandoned me, leaving me to die in the cold winter. Well, look at me now. I will always have enough now, and no one will stop me. Sure? A monster! Thorn was angry and started to charge at us. We were no match for him, but luckily, with our small size, we were able to fly above him and out of the cave. I will get you, Fozo, in time. That honey will be mine! <laughs> On days 27 to 29, the mosquito and I were flying fast away from Thorn. Come on, we have to keep flying. The mosquito then just stopped. Hey, What's the matter? I looked around and everything inside the nearby forest was dead. Was this Thorn? If we don't do something about him, the entire forest could turn into this. This place, it used to be beautiful. I remember being here as a kid. Animals of all kinds shared this space in perfect balance. And we all just got along. Then our king found that blood flower and that bear moved in and it's all falling apart. That's horrible. Well, don't worry. We can change things and restore all of it. I sure hope so, B. But I'm not sure if I can 
fully believe it just yet. At the very least, you taking that flower will help save my people from our king, so I'll take you there if you want. Thank you for having faith in me. Now come on, let's go and fix this. On days 30 to 32, the mosquito brought me to his kingdom. It was in a beautiful, tall red forest, high up in the trees. Wow, this place is amazing. Yeah, it really is. Our king found it for us well, before he turned flower hungry. High up were loads of mosquito guards everywhere. I can see that. How are we going to get inside? It won't be easy. The flower is in the throne room. We need to be really careful. Come on. I followed the mosquito through his home high in the trees, remaining undetected until we came upon the king's keep. We snuck inside the keep, trying not to be seen. Is that? Far inside the throne room lied the blood tulip. Ah, you. You dare come back after what you've done to your people? I betrayed you. Us mosquitoes are supposed to be allies to the forest. King, it is you that has betrayed your people, all because of that flower. You are a coward. Blasphemy! You have come here just to die. On days 33 to 35, the Blood King mosquito flew in and started to attack us. He was much larger than the other mosquitoes and incredibly strong. He shot out very powerful blood at us. Ah! Thanks to the help of my mosquito friend, though, we were able to outmaneuver the king's attacks and counter. You think this is over? The king then signaled lower mosquito guards to enter through the room. Oh no. With their combined forces, the battle was a lot harder, but the both of us knew what we were fighting for. And with one final hit, we were able to take the king down. No! The king's crown was dropped, and Mose went to pick it up. Hey, look at you. Because of this, the guards looked confused and stopped attacking. Whoa, they must have just been following orders. Now my people can finally rest easy knowing that they're free. Thanks, Fozo, for everything. Of course, we're in this together. I then went over to the blood tulip and grabbed it. Because of this, I gained five more hearts and my chest started to feel weird. I now could shoot out hot honey at will. Awesome. You know, Fozo, I think this place has too much history with our king. Is it okay if I go home with you and start my own kingdom? Of course. Of course. On days 36 to 39, I arrived back at base with my new mosquito friends. I built them up their very own tall tree colony so that they could truly call this place their home. Wow, this place looks great, Fozo. I can't wait to grow this place up for my people. Of course. It feels good that two different colonies could team up for the greater good. Speaking of colonies, I placed the blood tulip down, which strengthened the hive. From there, I collected its pollen and used the resources to build up the beehive even more. It's closer and closer to being complete. My little bee, just look at you. Did you find that honey core? I sure did. The queen was excited and brought us inside the hive. From there, we placed the honey core on a pedestal. Just as the core got placed, a large signal burst out from the hive. What was that? Then I heard the sound of buzzing. Wait, bees? My fellow bees started flying back from the forest and coming home. All right. Our queen. With the core back in place, our colony can finally find their way back home. Hopefully with more flowers, I can make the hive even stronger than it was before. Great work, Fozo. Now come with me. I need to show you something. On days 40 to 44, the queen brought me to a clearing out of our colony forest. Hey, where are you taking me? You see that cloud far off in the distance? I looked up far off into the distance. Yeah, what are we looking at? Well, that is where the next flower is, the burning sunflower. That's great. We are going to be back up to full force in no time. Not so fast. That cloud's height is past the flight limitations of just a regular bee. If you try to fly up there as you are now, you won't be able to sustain the strong gust of wind. And you, well, will die. Okay, noted. Don't worry, Fozo. 
Yeah, so you see, there's been said long ago in ancient bee history to have existed a special type of nectar. Nectar, huh? Precisely. Otherwise known as the lost ancient nectar. However, many believe it's a myth, but not me. If a bee were to find it and pour it throughout his wings, well, it would amplify their flying skills by a wide margin. Huh, very well. Now, how do I find it? On days 45 to 47, I followed my fellow bee until he led me straight to an ancient temple. Well, I think this might be the place, Bozo, but no one knows how to get inside. I guess it's time I figure that out myself. I left the bee and flew straight to the main entryway, but just like the bee said, it was locked. After trying to mine the blocks, I realized I needed to find another way in. I kept searching until I found a weird looking pattern of honeycomb targets on the wall. Here goes nothing. Using my new honey shot ability, I tried to shoot at one of the targets, but missed by a long shot. I guess I need some practice. You must use your heightened senses as a bee, Bozo. That's the only way. You're right. I concentrated and listened to my new friend. Come on, Fozo. Heighten your senses. I shot my honey shot and it was a direct hit. Two more times and the door finally opened. I did it. Let's hope this nectar is worth it. I wandered throughout the temple when I finally stumbled upon an opening. Right in front of me was a large nectar oasis. On days 48 to 52, I walked into the oasis. I was about to dip my wings inside of it when I heard a skittering sound coming from behind me. You stupid idiot bee! What? How did you get in here? I have been following you for days! Do you have any idea how bad you made me look to Thorn? Why should I care? How could you even work for someone like him? Does it matter? I am gonna defeat you here and bring him your head! Then I will finally get his approval! Splinter was about to charge in, but was quickly cut off by a loud crashing sound. Out of nowhere, Thorn was there himself. You've gotta be kidding me! Uh, Thorn, what are you doing here? I wasn't gonna let you fail me again, you useless rat! I came here to end this myself! But, but I, I wasn't going to disappoint you this time! Silence! Now, I'm going to take this bee down and end this mutiny! Thorn started to charge in! Oh no! I knew I had to fight back with everything I had! But I quickly realized that my newly found upgrades just weren't enough! He ran at me with his brute strength and swatted me! Ah! I was hit down into the nectar and my body started to feel strange! I started to become stronger! causing my wings to change into full nectar wings. Using the power of the nectar, I shot straight up through the spire of the temple. On days 53 to 56, I shot up right in the center of the sky. Whoa, I have never been this high up. Watch it, you idiot. Uh, sorry. Because of the bird, I was turned around. And is that? It is. The cloud that the queen showed me. I started to fly over to it. These nectar wings are something else. Woohoo! I finally arrived at the cloud and was shocked to see a civilization of wasps. What's a killer bee doing up this high? How did you get up here? It's a long story. Look, I'm here for the sunflower. Oh, well then, uh, I'm sorry. You're out of luck, pal. What? No, I came all this way. It must be here. Ah, uh, follow me. The sky wasp took me to another room of their kingdom. And sitting there was the sunflower, but it didn't look so good. Hey, what's wrong with it? Some ship came by a couple days ago and took our sunflower seeds. Without them, our precious flower is dying. I will go out and find them. If I'm able to bring them back, can we make a deal? I need this flower. You're one ambitious bee. I'll think about it. Now go. On days 57 to 59, I started flying off to the north in search of the sunflower seeds, when out of nowhere, I spotted an airship. 
Huh, that seems worth checking out. I approached it and saw penguins? What? They said it wasn't possible. They said us fatties could never fly. Well, look who's flying now. <laughs> As I got closer, I could see that the penguins were using the sunflower seeds to power up their ship. Whoa, time to sneak on board and grab what is mine. I flew in unnoticed and made my way over to the seeds. Yes, I got them. Or no? What's happening? Brace yourselves. We're going down. Why is this happening? I have literally no idea. Ah! Knowing I had to think fast, I used my new hot honey ability and shot it at the ship's generator. This caused the fuel to fill up again and the ship started to stabilize. Ah! Uh, huh. Must have been a malfunction or something. <clears throat> Anyways. Phew! That was close. Okay, time to get out of here. I returned to the Sky Wasp Society on days 60 to 63. From there, I brought the sunflower seeds back to the guard who was waiting for me. Here you go. Wow, you really found them? Oh, this is perfect. The guard walked over and put them back in the sunflower, and it immediately began to transform. The sunflower was now back to its full glory. You know what, B? Without you, this wouldn't have been possible. Go ahead, take the sunflower. Only if you promise to take care of it. Of course I will. Thanks. I grabbed the newly transformed sunflower and began to upgrade. I gained five more hearts and grew larger in size. Because of this, I also got a really cool honey grab ability that came straight from the ground. This is sick. Thank you, Sky Wasp. You have no idea how much I appreciate this. On day 64 to 68, I got back to base and immediately placed the sunflower down. With the additional pollen, my fellow bees and I went to work and started to build up our beehive even more. Inside of it, I made sure to add some sleeping quarters for my other bees to stay in. Awesome! Because of this, I noticed even more bees starting to come in from the tree lines. With the bees coming back and the improved hive, it was really looking like we had a chance against Thorn. Fozo, the colony, my goodness, it's almost complete. You've done very well. Just one more flower and we may be able to stand up to that bear and stop his destruction. Thorn is going to regret ever coming to this forest. Just then, I noticed that there were some hummingbirds entering our base. Yeah, this place will be great. Don't you think it'll be great? Yeah, I think it'll be great. What are they doing here? And there's been a lot of commotion going on away from camp. And it's pushing some of the other animals over here. Could be worth checking out. Huh, you know, you might be right. On days 69 to 73, I followed the trail of critters throughout the jungle. It didn't take long for me to finally reach a really damaged village. What is going on here? Not my home. <laughs> Oh, this sucks. It sucks so bad, man. I looked around and all of the villagers' houses were destroyed. Just then, I heard a cry that was much different than the others. <laughs> I walked inside of a house to see a villager who was alone and sad. <laughs> What the? <laughs> Just then, the villager used the potion of magic and revealed himself to actually be a witch. Oh, this was too easy. Then something really hard hit me in the back and I began to pass out. On day 74 to 77, I woke up to the sound of snarling. What is going on? Ah, you stupid bee. Now I get my revenge. I am going to savor this moment. Just remember, the swamp is off limits. Yeah, yeah, get lost. So what, this is it? It seems that way. Fozo, you did all of this just to 
fail. You are only an insect after all. It looks like I win. Yeah, we win. Shut up, you rat. I had to do all of this myself because you are such a failure. What? I have been helping you this whole time. I, I swear. Help? <laughs> you think you were helping me? You think you're anywhere near useful as me? Yeah, I thought we were friends. Shut it! You have done nothing. You really thought I was going to give you my scraps. You really thought I would share? I was just keeping you close for one last treat before I hibernate. What? You are going to eat me? That's enough! Time to finish off this bee! Thorn started to turn to me, and I thought that I was done for! Then, right before he took me out, Thorn screamed in pain! An explosion happened, caused by Splinter? Leave him alone, you monster! He then shot another one, which opened my cage! Thorn turned around and swatted at him! You traitor! Arrgh! In the commotion, I had just enough time to fly out of the hole. Come on, Splinter! We have to go! Now! On day 78 to 80, the rat and I ran far away through the trees. We heard rustling off behind us, and I knew that Thorn was searching. We have to keep going! <coughs> Stop! Stop! What? We can't! We have to go! No, you have to go! Listen, it's up to you now, Fozo. Don't talk like that. Come on, you can make it. I'm so sorry. I just wanted to feel needed, Fozo. No one has ever wanted me my entire life. Who'd want a rat? <laughs> I just thought if I joined Thorn, I would be powerful, but... <laughs> Oh, he was just using me all along. Splinter, we can do this together. We can take him down. No, I'm I'm sorry. There's nothing I can do to make up for any of this. Please, just don't take it out on us, rats. We just wanted to feel needed. Splinter? Splinter! No! I was extremely sad, but was interrupted by more leaves moving throughout the woods. Oh, no. Thorn? Just as I thought I was done for, smaller rats emerged from the forest. I could tell that they were extremely sad, and they knew so was I. The rats then started to walk in a direction, and I felt as if they were signaling me. I followed them to see what they were trying to show me. On days 81 to 85, I followed the rats until we reached a creepy looking cave entrance. Uh, where did you guys lead me? This place holds the Titan flower. Tonight is the only night it will bloom until a whole year. So you better hurry. Right. I did as the rat said and entered throughout the doorway. Hello? I walked throughout the lush cave tunnels until I reached an underground opening, but there was nothing inside. Just then, the moon started to reveal itself through the clouds, causing the entire cave to shake. What's going on? A flower much larger than the others sprouted in the center of it. Awesome! I went to go pick it up. But to my surprise, it started to attack me? What the? This flower is hostile? On days 86 to 90, the flower started to attack. Ah! It shot out very powerful poisonous attacks at me. And I knew that I had to avoid them. I kept shooting at it with my honey blast, which caused it to shoot out very dangerous vines from underneath me. Uh, get away! I knew what I was fighting for, and because of this, I couldn't give up. I used everything I had on the flower, which finally caused its defeat. Ha! I did it! I went over and picked up the flower, which caused me to fully upgrade, making me grow larger bee antlers. I gained five more hearts and now had a very powerful honey trap ability. I could now trap and explode my enemies with ease. With this, I think I'm finally ready to take on Thorn. On days 91 to 94, I arrived back at my hive with the rats. I immediately went went over and built Splinter up his very own memorial site. I know he started off evil, but he truly did make it up. You did the right thing, Splinter. You were a hero. Truly a hero. All of us rats will always remember you, Splinter. Hey, Bozo, 
Thanks for giving us a hoe. Yeah, we haven't had one of these places before. Of course. I went out and got the right amount of materials to build the rats their very own houses. There you go. I hope you guys enjoy it. This is amazing. It's even better than cheese. From there, I went over and placed the final flower. Because of this, my fellow bees and I went to work by fully building up our new beehive. With all of us working together, we were able to finally finish it up. Wow, just look at it. It's finally complete. Bozo, I don't know how we could have done this without you. You are truly the savior to our people. Not yet, I'm not. I think it's time we take down this bear together. On days 95 to 99, I gathered all of my friends and fellow bees around the base. What's going on? I don't know, man. Just listen. I'm trying to pay attention. Thank you all for listening to me today. A while ago, our homes were raided and destroyed by Thorn. But look at how far we've come to truly turn things around. While our home may be safe, others are still in jeopardy. I think it is up to all of us to make things right by taking him down. Yeah, agreed. Oh, yeah. Just as I was about to leave with the insects, a large explosion interrupted us. It was Thorn himself. I heard you've been making more honey. I'll be taking that now. On day 100, my fellow bees and I all charged in together. Bring it. I watched as Moe's flew through the skies and attacked him whenever he could. The ants took the floor below him and started to bite at his feet. And the rats did what they could to hurt him as well. I have worked way too hard for this, for all of it. And I won't let you puny insects take it away from me. My fellow bees then flew in as well and started to attack. He countered everyone with his brute strength and even took down a few of my friends. Oh no, he's still too strong. Hey, you want to fight someone? Fight me. With pleasure. Thorn then turned his attention straight to me and began to charge in. I used all of my newly acquired abilities and managed to really stun him. He was easily my toughest opponent yet, but I thought of everyone that was counting on me. I have to win. I have to. I hit Thorn harder and harder until finally he was starting to grow weak. No, no! Thorn was finally defeated, and now the forest and the animals inside of it could live in peace. On day one, I was bringing food back to my queen, wanting to prove myself as a worthy warden ant. Look at what I did, your highness. Fozo, no! That food is from the forbidden forest, which only means... In a huge burst, ginormous scary spiders burst through my colony's anthill walls. Oh no! Defend the queen! Groups of stronger warden ants ran in to defend. Wait, uh, I can help! Stay back! This is your fault, and you're the weakest ant in the colony anyways. My warden ant colony was doing everything they could, but the spiders, they were too big. One by one, they would kill and eat my colony. <laughs> Us forbidden spiders have finally found you and will feast upon your god. My once beautiful anthill was now a battlefield, but from all the destruction, paved a tunnel. Queen, we have to escape. Come on, this way. On day two, a small group of us were able to escape the anthill tunnel, only to reach a large river. If one of us falls, we're done for. My queen and the group of other ants began to jump from lily pad to lily pad easily. Uh, wait up. I tried to jump after them, but it was a lot more difficult for me. We must keep going. Guys, no, wait for me. I was in the middle of the river doing my best when out of nowhere, I heard, uh-oh. I looked up and saw an owl flying overhead. It was getting closer and closer, but thankfully I made it to the other side just in time. That was close, but my people, they're gone. Those spiders found our anthill because of me. I have to make things right and find them. Ah, wait. 
fire ants? Hey, have you guys seen any other warden ants pass by here? Passing to you, passing to me, passing to you. Hello? Can anyone answer me? Ugh. I followed the line until it brought me to a different looking tree. And on a wooden throne sitting in front of it was the fire ants king. Wait, a warden ant in my terrain? <laughs> Leave at once. No, listen, please. My colony, most of them, they're gone. Just destroyed by these large, deadly spiders. The forbidden spiders have gotten to you too? This isn't good. Follow me. I followed the king ant until we reached a shrub blocking our way. He set it ablaze, revealing another pathway. Walking down it, I saw nothing but dead looking trees. And inside of the webs were some of the king's past people. The forbidden spiders have taken control of this area ever since you, warden ants, went into hiding on the day of the big battle. The strength of those monsters is unmatched and their sole purpose is to kill, eat, and move on to the next place. Wait, did you say we went into hiding after a big battle? What big battle? Before the king could answer me though, we both heard rumbling and destruction coming back from the empire. Oh no! On day four, the two of us arrived back only to see pure destruction and chaos. The fire ants were running around terrified as the forbidden spiders entered in and destroyed everything. My colony! I, I have to help. As I said this, one of the spiders spotted me. A rogue little ant warden escaped. No matter. The spider lunged to try and eat me, but I ran underneath him just in time. He was chasing behind me, but I noticed the tree. I can get away there. I began to escape of the fire ant's large tree, jumping from platform to platform. Come here. It wasn't long until I made it to the top where I... I saw a skull apple. I'm so tired. I need energy. I ran up and took a bite out of the apple. And because of this, I became a stronger warden ant. I gained five more hearts and was now more powerful. Whoa, what did this apple just do? There you are. <laughs> the spider lunged towards me, but out of fear, I let out a new sonic bite at him. Whoa, the spider was barely phased though and was slowly walking forward, about to eat me whole. But because of all the fire, the tree was weakening, causing the entire trunk to shake. This isn't good. The entire tree collapsed, causing the spider to fall straight to its death. Ah, ah. Oh, I'm, I'm okay. That skulk apple, it made me stronger, but why? The lily pad I was on was flowing down the stream until I got washed up on a beach. As I stepped on land, my newly formed tendrils began to wiggle. Because of this, I was able to spot patches of skulk leading away from the beach. Whoa, I followed it and was able to find my queen and a group of my people. Guys, there you are. I I found you. I ran over to them in pure excitement, but as soon as they noticed me, they turned and blasted their warden abilities my way. Ah, ouch. Why are you guys doing this? Hold your attacks. The queen walked forward away from the other ants. Queen, I- Bozo, all of this is your fault. Please, I didn't mean to expose the colony. I just- Silence. You have done enough. You are hereby banished from the colony. Because of you, those unstoppable spiders killed most of our people. From there, the queen walked away from me and inside the newly formed anthill. Wait, banished? Hey, come back here. Look, our colony can't just keep hiding from those spiders, okay? This forest, it's all dying. We have to take a stand. What do you know about taking a stand? You weren't there on the day of the big battle. The day those spiders entered this forest, we tried to fight back against them, but lost everything. I lost 
everything, and it won't happen again. So that's why we went into hiding? Because we lost a fight? Well, I'm not gonna just live in fear. I'm gonna stop those spiders and take back what's all rightfully ours. Fozo, it's a death wish. I left the anthill with a newly found confidence and was able to find a nice place right on the edge of the beach. Time to make my own home. If I got kicked out of my colony, then I will just make a new one. Inside of it, I even made a room that held the skulk apple I found earlier. I wonder what's so special about this fruit. My thought then got interrupted by a loud yell from outside. What's going on? On day seven, I went over to another spot of the beach where there was a tailless scorpion being surrounded by large crab bandits. Uh, back off. I'm warning you. Yeah, what are you gonna do? Sting us? <laughs> hey, leave him alone. I used my warden bite to bite one of the crabs back. Ah, brave little lamb. <laughs> You're gonna regret that. All of the crabs from there began to jump around and try to stomp over me. Ah! I was doing my best to avoid them until we all got cut off by a much larger crab. Hey, that's my anthill. Well... Look who built in the Crab Bandit's territory! Back off and leave us alone! Should it! If you want your stupid home and belongings back, then you'll listen to us! Wait, the Skulk Apple is in there. Okay, what do you want? Both of you guys must pay the taxes for being on our beaches, and I know just the way that you can pay them. <laughs> On day eight, the scorpion and I followed one of the crab bandits to a tall hedge. We walked through and inside of it, only to reveal that the other side held a back yard? Wait a minute. Is this a pool party? There were people all dancing and partying around, and some even diving in the pool. Shut up, party! This is not a safe place for an ant. I followed the crab alongside of the pool area, avoiding being spotted until we saw a grill on the opposite side. Those people make the best food in town. You go and bring back a full burger from them, then you can have your home back. We have to go through all of this? Okay. Yeah, no biggie. The two of us left the hedge and started to make our way through the backyard. People were walking and dancing everywhere, and some even almost stepped on us. From the countless swimming, we also had to do our best to avoid large water splashes and dropped belongings. We were almost spotted, but took cover right before the grilling station. But my attention then got caught inside of the house where I saw another burger sitting on a countertop. Wait, is that made out of skulk? Just like that apple. I need to get it. Instead of listening to the crab's orders, I went straight for the burger inside. What are you doing? On days nine to 10, I was inside of the kitchen and was able to climb up to the countertop. Aha, uh -huh, there it is. I went over and took a bite out of the burger. And because of this, something happened. I once again grew stronger in size, gained five more hearts, and could now let out my very own warden boom. Oh, yeah. I quickly picked up a piece of the burger. But as I looked back, I saw that the scorpion was in the open. Before he could move, a random pool lady spotted him. Scorpion! Everyone in the party began to panic and run around frantically. Everybody, run! Well, so much for not getting caught. Oh, don't worry. I'll take care of it. Oh, no. I ran towards them. The buff man was trying his best to hit at and step on the scorpion. But thankfully, I was able to run in and shoot my newly found ability right at him. Whoa! Ah, I barely know how to swim. Hey, you. We need to leave now. On days 11 to 12, the scorpion and I made it safely to the hedge and hid inside of it. That guy was lucky you stepped in. He wouldn't be getting out of that pool if good old Pierce the Perilous got a pinch in. Yeah. 
Okay, Pierce, is it? Whatever you say. But hey, it looks like you found the Boom Burger. Wait, you know what this is? Oh yeah, man. You wooden ants used to be crazy strong because of that stuff. I heard there were different food items your people used to bring to their colony. The Skulk Apple, the Boom Burger, the Tendril Cake, the Blinded Pizza, and the Deep Dock Sandwich. Maybe if I can find all of them, I can bring them to my colony and show them that we can put up a fight. Come on, let's go. Wait, man, don't we need to go back to get a burger for the crabs? They'll finish us. Yeah? With this new Sonic Boom, we'll see about that. We traveled back to the crab Crab Sandcastle, only to see a horrifying sight. Everything is in ruins. What happened here? On days 13 to 14, as I headed inside the ruined sandcastle, I noticed that all of the bandit crabs were gone, except for their leader, who was being overshadowed by the giant forbidden spider. Please, I beg you, mercy. Fine, your beast will be a quick one. In one attack, the spider killed the crab instantly. That's Alvo. He killed my entire species. Hurry, we gotta hide. We ducked behind some rubble just in time. We have expanded our caves for spare creatures to be fed on in the winter. Now winter? No, I have another use for them. Spare creatures? Are some of my people still alive? I have to find out. Pierce, you head back to my anthill. I'll be back soon. Wait, I, uh, I can help. Oh, you know what? Yeah, I'll just stay away from the giant creepy spiders. After following the spiders for a short amount of time, we reach a dark, scary forest. This must be the Forbidden Lands. As they began to crawl down, I heard my queen's words in the back of my head. It's a death wish. I have to do this for my people. On days 15 to 16, the twisting tunnels of the cave led me down under the earth as the echo of spiders crawled all around me. Stay calm, Fozo. I slowly pushed further and further into the caves until ah, this place is the worst. As I looked towards where the spider was heading, I saw a cavern and there were a ton standing all around and lots of spider eggs. Listen to me, my family. Those ants we have taken alive will be dealt with shortly. When my hatchlings rise, they will eat them and grow. Our family will be much, much larger. If they can get even more spiders, running away won't even be an option anymore. With all of them paying attention to Alvo, I saw an opening to a side chamber filled with even more webbing. I quickly ran inside to see some warden ants caught up in the webs. Ugh. Ozo, what are you doing here? You're gonna get yourself killed! Don't worry, I'm getting you guys out of here. On days 17 to 18, I blasted my people free and noticed just how weak they were. Just follow right behind me, okay? As I led them back towards the entrance of the tunnels, we saw that more spiders were blocking our path. Oh, great, we're trapped. Wait here, I'm gonna cause a distraction. I crawled down a separate tunnel as fast as I could. And at the end of it was a tall cave with sleeping spiders up and above. Perfect. With a powerful sonic boom, I sent out a large echo throughout the tunnel, shaking the walls and causing the roof to collapse. I barely got out of the way as the sleeping spiders were crushed by the rubble. What was that? It's coming from the sleeping quarters. Okay, I didn't really think this through. The spiders ran in as I started to creep my way back down the tunnel when... Hey, the man's escaped. Kill him. Uh-oh. The spiders began to chase me down the tunnels and back up towards the exit. I gotta hurry. There waiting for me were the other warden ants. Almost there. Ah! I spun around and used my sonic boom attack to break the roof and the entrance, blocking the spiders in. Phew! Whoa, you actually did it! But how? I'll explain later. We shouldn't stay here any longer.
On days 19 to 21, the Warden Ants and I made it safely back to base. You made it! And with friends? I told you I would. Now, to really make this place a home for a colony, I got to work building a desert-styled room for Pierce in the Ant Hill. You know, no one's ever been this kind to me. Uh, thank you. Of course! From there, I made sure to dig out more of the base to make room for all of my fellow Warden Ants. What you did back there? That was incredible! Now, uh, where's the queen? Before I could answer, another warden ant walked into my base. Wait, I remember you. You were with the queen, right? Yes, and I saw your entire argument. And as crazy as it sounds, I think you're right. I'm done running away! Hopefully, more of my people can see that soon. With that, I went over and placed the boom burger down in the base for everyone to see. As I did this, some of the ants came over and took a bite of the food themselves, causing them to upgrade. Whoa, that's one good burger. Mm -mm -mm. So if I can bring back the rest of the warden foods, the colony will become stronger than ever before. I wish we were in the queen's good graces still. I bet she knows all about this kind of food, but now she probably wouldn't tell us anything about it. Well, maybe she does doesn't have to. On days 22 to 26, I traveled back all the way to my people's destroyed home. There were webs everywhere, but seemingly no one in sight. Okay, if the queen had anything that would lead me to the next piece of warden food, it would be in here. As I walked closer to the queen's throne, something began to happen as it sensed my presence. Whoa, a hidden passageway? I walked inside and saw that I was in the queen's room. While searching around, I wasn't finding any clues, but I did find a strange journal. The memory of Warren. The big battle? And Warren, who's that? I began to read as I saw that we had a king. His name was Warren, and he was the strongest warden ant in the colony, always standing up for his people and doing what was best for them. But then the forbidden spiders came to these lands and started to take over everything. King Warren for once thought it would be best to run and keep his colony safe. But the queen told him otherwise. We are the warden ants. If anyone can take them on, it's us. We must fight for what's ours. Okay, my love, I trust you. He led the whole colony in a battle against the forbidden spiders. And the big battle ended with his death. The warden ants faced their first loss. And from that moment, we went into hiding. Poor queen. No wonder she doesn't want to fight. She blames herself for King Warren's death. As I said this, I looked over to where I found the diary and sitting there was a hidden map. Aha, looks like the queen didn't want anyone to find this. Could this lead to the next piece of warden food? On days 27 to 29, following the map's coordinates led me straight to a large building on a hillside. What could be in here? I found a small crack in the wall to enter through and into the structure to see that the place was filled with old people. <laughs> I love this show. What is this? This place some sort of retirement home all right barbara your birthday tendril cake will be ready soon ah good because i'm not done watching my show yet yeah right tendril cake that's got to be the next warden food i need i followed the staff member as they left the room and headed straight for a dinner table there on it was the cake i needed bingo I crawled around the room until I made it onto the rafter and above the cake. How am I supposed to get down there? Uh, okay, maybe this wasn't my best idea. Ah! Ah! I looked around and was now on the tendril cake, surrounded by burning candles. Oh, well, time to eat. But just before I could take a bite, the candles around me came to life. What the? Stop right there, you dirty pest. This cake is under the protection of the CPU. 
the CPU? The candle protection unit! Whoa, 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 wait! Look, I just need one slice to- Wax and flame units, move in! Eliminate this pest! Squadrons of candle warriors began to run in and attack. Candle mages would try and burn me with their flames, and the small candles would explode. Ah! I began to run, but the frosting was so thick. No, I'm stuck. The candles all came rushing in and were about to take me down when we all heard loud footsteps shaking the entire cake. Time to blow out the candles on my cake. All units, this is a code red. Code red, get out of there. All the candle warriors started to run back as a powerful gust of wind blew over the area. Every single one of them were completely wiped out. That was fun. So bad I'm allergic. On days 33 to 35, I was finally able to take a bite out of the tendril cake. This caused me to upgrade again. I was now a stronger warden ant, gained five more hearts, and had wings. Whoa. Before I left, I grabbed a slice of the cake and started to actually fly. Okay, I think I'm getting the hang of it. I was about to leave when I saw a little candle person hiding in the rafters above. <laughs> ah! Whoa. Hey, it's okay. Are you all alone? Yeah, I've always been. The other candles weren't very nice to me. Yeah, I know the feeling. Well, I got somewhere in mind where you don't have to be alone then if you want to come with me. I brought the little candle back to my colony's home where I built him his very own candlelit room. Wow, we thanks! Those other candles would never do something like this for me. Kick me out because I didn't agree with the way they did things. You and I have a lot in common already, little guy. What's your name? They call me Kid. Well, Kid, you don't have to worry about anyone kicking you out of here. I promise. With that, I placed the tendril cake slice down in the base and allow the other ants to eat it, causing them to upgrade. Wow, that's some good food. Uh, by the way, Fozo, I think you're screwed. Scorpion friend was looking for you. Said something about meeting him at a pond? On days 36 to 39, while flying around the nearest pond, I smelled something. Ah, what is that? Hey, Bozo, down here. I flew down below and landed beside Pierce. Is that smell coming from you? What smell? While you were out, I think I found a savory slice. Huh? The what? You know what? Just follow me. He then led me over to a sewer entrance. No wonder you smell so bad. Once we went inside, the pipe opened up into a whole sewer town. There was trash and sewers everywhere. And rats roamed the streets and their homes. It's like a whole civilization lives down here. We made it across the town as Pierce brought me to the entrance of a pizzeria. Okay, so listen up. The next warden food piece, the blinded pizza, is in here for sure. It is? Only thing is, it's locked. And its owner is a real piece of work. But I think you can open it. Great. Come on, let's go. Well, I could pick the lock if I had a tail. As you can see, I don't. But if my new ant pal were to find me a new one. You want me to get you a new tail? Yep. It's the only way to get that blinding pizza. I think I know just how you can find one. On days 40 to 44, I arrived at the factory on the surface. What kind of scorpion tail would be here? Using my new wings, I flew through a vent and into the building with loads of abandoned equipment and crates around. It wasn't long until I came across a broken down claw machine. Is his tail in there? Crawling inside of the machine, I pushed past toy after toy until finally seeing a toy scorpion tail. Huh, didn't know they made these. But as I was about to grab the tail, I was blown back by a small explosion. Ah! I looked back and hopping towards me were a bunch of little toy creepers. This machine is our prison and nobody will take any of our things away from us! 
they all began to attack as they would leap up and explode. You guys are crazy. Back off. I flew up and tried to stay out of their reach, but one jumped off of a tall tail, hitting me head on. Ah, ah. Hitting the ground hard made me accidentally let out a sonic boom, breaking open the machine. An exit for me. On days 45 to 47, all of the creepers jumped out of the machine as I peacefully went over to grab Pierce's new tail. I then flew out of the factory, heading back to the sewers when I was hit out of the air by webbing. Ah! Looking around, I realized I had fallen into the heart of the forbidden forest. Here, the spiders had built up a huge encampment with even more spider eggs all around. Did they spread above ground? You are the one that destroyed my cage. My home. Yeah, now you know how it feels. I used my sonic bite to tear out of the webbing just as Alvo lunged towards me. You are different. I don't smell the fear coming from your bones. They molested your colony, but that will change. More forbidden spiders then began to crawl out of the darkness, and some of the eggs even hatched. My family only grows stronger by the day, and they will feast. They were all about to charge in at once, but suddenly I felt the ground fall out below me. I barely got my wings to catch my fall as I landed in a tunnel deep below the forest. Bozo, no, we thought you were the queen. Wait, what? Are you the ants that stayed with her? Why isn't she with you? I don't have time for this. She was taken, okay? Taken? Wait, I followed them down the tunnels until we reached a small campsite with other warden ants. Who was she taken by? We don't know. We thought it was the spiders, so that's why we were here. We've been searching for days. I then looked around and noticed that they all seemed so weak and hungry. Everyone, go back to my colony and join us. You all need the rest, and together we'll find the queen. I promise. We don't really have any other choice. Fine, we'll meet you there. We went our separate ways as I made it back to Pierce in front of the pizzeria. Here you go, one scorpion tail. Thank goodness. With that, Pierce was able to attach the tail onto himself and then used it to pick the lock. Yes. On days 53 to 56, we entered the pizzeria to see that the place was full of rat customers. Whoa, it's actually a pretty busy spot for rats, apparently. There, in the kitchen. The blinding pizzas gotta be in there. Good eye, Pierce. I walked through the kitchen doors and started to look around, but then appearing in the doorway was an intimidating rat chef. Hey, is that an ant in my kitchen? No, no, no. The rat rushed forward and started to swing his big chef's knife at me. Wah! Knock it off. I moved around the kitchen, fighting him with my sonic booms. Look, please. I just want to find the blinding pizza. The blinding a pizza? I haven't made that pie in almost 20 rat years, pal. That dish went out of business. No one wanted to eat it. Well, now you have a customer who does. Or what? Can you not do it? Why, you? I can make any pie. We both went to the other side of his kitchen, where his pizza oven was. All right, I need a three ingredients. A blinding dough, the ancient cheese, and the skulky sauce. They all should be somewhere in this town, but I sure ain't gonna get them. So you bring them to me, and I'll make you the best pizza you've ever had. On days 57 to 59, I flew throughout the town looking for the ingredients. Thankfully, I was able to buy the blinding dough off of an old rat at a convenience store. Uh, thanks. <laughs> now scram out of here. The ancient cheese I found in a dark alleyway, but as I grabbed it, something snapped at me. Seriously, a mousetrap? 
Finally, I went down into an abandoned basement full of old bottles. And there, across the room, was a bottle with a skulky glow. There you are. In a hurry to collect my sauce, I hit a shelf, causing some of the bottles to fall and shatter. The liquids all mixed together caused a puddle to form. And from it rose a large sewage monster. Oh, come on! It began to launch waves of disgusting sewer water towards me and completely drenched me. This smell is horrible. I fought back with my sonic boom, flying around the basement to dodge all of its attacks until I finally took it down. I was able to now pick up the last ingredient. I better get out of here before I make another mess. On days 60 to 63, I returned to the Chef Rat's Pizzeria to see him serving a group of young, mutated warrior turtles? Yo, best pizza in the whole sewer, man! Haha, <laughs> radical! They ran off, leaving me with the chef. You got some weird customers. <sighs> Do you have the ingredients or not? I quickly tossed him over everything I had collected and watched as he scurried into his kitchen, only to hear music coming from inside? What's going- Aha! I make it the dough, spread the sauce, sprinkle the cheese, and voila! Your pizza is served! Whoa! As I took a bite of the pizza, I felt myself grow in strength and size. I gained five more hearts and a newfound ability to dash forward. Perfect! Of course it is! Now, leave and never break into my restaurant again! On days 64 to 68, I made it safely back to my anthill with the new and improved Pierce. But before we could go any further, he pulled me aside. Hey, Fozo, I uh really appreciate this new tale. I've always been more of a big talk, no walk kind of guy. Just been so tired of feeling useless. But now, finally feel whole again. I'll never forget what you've done for me. Of course. I'm just happy that I could help you out. I made my way over to the food room and placed the blinding slice with the others. My fellow warden ants then quickly took their bites, causing them to upgrade. But just then, I noticed that the group of weak-looking ants were huddled in the corner. Go on, guys. Eat the food. You'll feel better. We can't. The Warden Queen would be furious. She told us never to touch those. The Queen? I almost forgot she was taken. We need to find her. One of the weaker ants came forward, dropping down her crown. This is uh, all we have left of her, but I don't know how it could help. Thank you. Now, while I'm away, eat that food. I promise you need it. On day 69 to 73, I flew out of base as fast as I could with the queen's crown. What am I supposed to do with this? Huh. Instinctively, I placed it on my head and was suddenly sucked into a vision. It looked to be a battlefield littered with destruction. Is she here? In a flash, I returned to my body. Well, now I know where to look. After searching for a while, I found myself at the edge of the same desolate wasteland. This is where it happened, isn't it? The big battle. I looked around and noticed a mountain towering above the area. I'll be able to see everything from there. It was a struggle, but as I finally reached the mountain's peak, there looking down at everything was the queen. There you are. Wait, you weren't kidnapped? What? Fozo? No, I left to be alone. Why are you here? I've been searching everywhere for you. You have to come back to our colony now. I, I'm not fit to lead anymore. I've always tried my best to protect all of us, the colony, from what happened here all those years ago, but it's never been enough. My people are growing weaker by the day. Fight, don't fight. Either way, we all end up dead. I know what happened to your husband, to the king. And I'm so sorry that you lost him. You shouldn't live the rest of your life blaming yourself. You did all you could then, but you can do more now. If we don't take a stand against those spiders, then the rest of the colony is going to be killed off. 
same as the king. Just then, a giant spider ambushed us. Without hesitation, it charged forward towards the queen. No! I quickly flew in between them, blasting it away. Leave her alone! The spider angrily hissed and began attacking me instead. It was still larger than I was, but I wasn't about to give up. I kept unleashing a bunch of attacks, and the spider kept countering. No, is this gonna be it? Just then, the spider was knocked back by the queen. Stay away from my people. Together, we blasted the spider again and again, until finally it was defeated. You, you helped me? You were right, Fozo. The king would want us to free the colony from the spider threat, not wallow in fear and sorrow. Thank you for not giving up on me. Of course. Happy to have you back, your highness. And I believe this belongs to you. Thank you. I can tell you've already collected most of the warden foods. If you retrieve the last one, we may finally stand a chance. The queen led me through the forest until we reached the entrance of a strange looking dump. Wait, is that Skulk? Yes, and within this place lies the deep, dark sandwich. Really? Then that's where I'm going next. The rest of our colony awaits your arrival at our new anthill. They need you. Then I shall return to them. Good luck, Fozo. Now, time to get myself a sandwich. On days 78 to 80, I headed inside of the deep, dark dump. Hello? Is there a deep, dark sandwich anywhere around here? <laughs> I then heard fast movement coming from behind me. Ah, hello? Who's there? Out of nowhere, a group of dumpster raccoons ran in and were circling me. Ah, I tried to fly, but was quickly swatted back down. So, a new pet has roamed into the dump, huh? He may be from the office, you know. From the office? No, look, I just want to get the deep dark sandwich, okay? I don't want to hurt anyone. Ah, uh, man, come on! Ah, so you want something very similar to what us dumpster raccoons want. The large dump raccoon then brought me over to where I could see a corner office raised over the dump. In that amazing, cold, air-conditioned office is a fridge. One that holds loads of food, but it is locked. Well, I could probably find a way to unlock it. If you manage to let us in, then I will let you take that deep, dark sandwich you're looking for. But be careful for a scary, ignorant beast resides there. On days 81 to 85, as I flew up to the office, I noticed that the keyhole was just big enough for me to fly into. I flew right in and looked at my new surroundings. There were a few desks and the fridge. I better get this door open. I saw a key sitting on one of the desks, but as I flew close to it, a massive claw swung over my head. Oh no, the beast! <laughs> But I looked up and saw that it was a giant office cat. Nice kitty. The cat wasted no time swiping at me again and chasing me around the office. I don't stand a chance against this thing. Where's that key? Finally, I flew fast enough to get enough space to grab it and was able to unlock the door. Charge! All the raccoons flooded in, overpowering the cat. Look who's in the air conditioning now! <laughs> <coughs> what? You want to be in here? All I've ever wanted is to be outside, but they always lock the door. Well, boss man here said that you were a monster who... Ow! <laughs> uh, sorry about that, ma'am. Uh, why don't we put our differences aside and work together from now on? Truce? Truce. With that, the raccoons opened the fridge for me, and there was the deep, dark sandwich. Yes! I took a bite, causing me to upgrade into my final warden ant form. I gained 10 more hearts and felt like the strongest ant ever. Thank you, everyone. Now, I got some scores to settle. On days 86 to 90, I left the deep, dark dump, but was met back to the site of my home, the forest. 
throughout the entire terrain, everything looked like it was consumed by death and destruction. Spiders were roaming around, taking down any creature they could and webbing up the land to claim the territory as theirs. Yes, my family. Spread no, the spider's numbers. It's too high. We have to try and stop this before it's too late. On days 91 to 94, I arrived back to my anthill. I looked around. My queen was sitting up above the rest of the warden ants. Thank goodness you're here safely. From there, I went to work and built up my queen, her very own throne in the center of the anthill. We couldn't fight as a colony without her direction. I then went over and placed the final warden food inside of our room, allowing the ants to eat it and gain its power. I looked up and our ants all looked so much stronger. Yes, they do. Now, step forward over here. Okay. I did as she said and looked out to see all of the warden people and even Pierce. Everyone, take a look. This is an example of how each and every one of us should act selfless, brave, and most importantly, caring. This ant you are looking at, even though rejected and blamed for his previous actions, took a stand and fought for this colony no matter what. So I think it's only suiting that he is the one that will lead us into the fight of our lives. The queen stood back and I never felt so honored. Thank you, everyone. The spiders, they are out of control. If we don't do something about it now, we will never have a home again. No more running. It's time that we take the fight to them. On days 95 to 99, I led my warden ant colony to face the forgotten spiders. Spiders. There, at the edge of the Forgotten Forest, was Alvo and his people. You know, the last time the ants tried to fight, they regretted it. You said it yourself. I'm different. And no matter what you do, we will fight together. Then you will die together. My family, devour them. All the spiders began to charge across the forest as I rallied my ants. This is it. For our colony, we all charged in and clashed with the spiders as the second big battle of our kind began. Ants and spiders were doing everything they could to swing into battle as both sides wanted to prove their strength. Take this. With the powerful sonic boom, I knocked back a horde of spiders, leaving an opening where I saw Alvo disappear into the darkness. Is he trying to escape? I have to get him. Go, no, we can handle these eight-legged freaks. We will be right behind you, Fozo. The colony is with you. On day 100, I chased after Alvo, but lost sight of him. Where did he go? The trees rustled to the left and right of me. Oh no, did I just fall into his trap? Suddenly, yes, you have. I felt his webs wrap around me as he pounced directly on top of me. Ah! <sighs> you are nothing but food. But the tool for my people's rise! I used my sonic bite to cut out of the webbing and quickly flew up. But Alvo hit me back down. Oh, he's too strong. Yes, that is the fear that I sensed on every creature. Now you are just like them. Before he attacked again, I looked over to the giant tree overlooking the forest. There, I flew as fast as I could, straight up the branches of the tree. Where are you going? Within an instant, Alvo was in front of me in the tree's branches. Oh no, this is it. <laughs> We continued to fight as we circled around the branches. I tried my best to dodge his every attack and just kept trying to tire him out. Stop running! Wrong again, Alvo. I'm not running. Never! With a final sonic boom, I launched Alvo off of the top of the tree as he plummeted far below. Yeah. No. No. Alvo and his family were defeated, and this forest can finally be free again.
On day one, I spawned in as a baby warden tiger, sitting high up inside of my beautiful skulk jungle home. I looked forward and saw my father, the king of the warden tigers, overlooking me and the entire empire around us. Look around, my son. Someday, this entire jungle will be yours. Mine? But just then, helicopters took to the skies right above us. They dropped down explosions on our entire home. And from them landed a bunch of mechanized insects. Tigers defend our home! The Max ran around and did everything they could to steal my home's resources. But my people went in and started to fight back. Some would win, but because of their numbers, they were quickly taken down and most were captured. No! I ran down, wanting to join the fight. But as I did, an explosion erupted from the jungle right near me. From the blast came a towering mech general. This territory now belongs to us. And with these resources, we will become the strongest military this world has ever seen. No, you can't do this. This is my home. Ah! You stupid little tiger. This jungle is mine. General Apex. And there is nothing you can do! The general was about to blast me again, but out of nowhere, my father jumped in between us. Leave my son alone! His roar let out a powerful warden boom, knocking back General Apex. Hurry, son, we need to go! On day two, I was running right behind my father. But as we did, the more that I saw jungle animals being attacked and captured by the mechs. No, everything's being destroyed. Keep running. We finally made it into a clearing where countless animals and mechs were at war. Now what? First harvest, skull. I looked over and saw that a spider was cornering a warden elephant. No, stay away from me. I can't stand this. I have to help. Wait. Stop! I began to rush towards the elephant as more and more animals were being taken down around me. As I got close, my rage built up into my claws as I swiped at the mech, causing me to use a sonic slash. You must die! The spider mech began to do everything it could to kill me. Ah! I did my best and tried to fight back, but I was so small compared to him. Son! My dad jumped in and we started to face off against the mech in unison. But finally, with my father's help, we took him down. Wow. Thank you for saving me. Of course. It's my duty as a warden tiger to help. Son, we have no time. My dad then threw a strange skulk heart over to me. What is this? The two of you must follow the beat of the heart. It will take you somewhere safe. Dad, wait. What are you? Son, I will meet you there. I must make sure the other tigers are safe. Now go. On day three, the two of us escaped from the battlefield through the jungle. How am I supposed to follow this? As I said that, the heart shot out an echoey blast in the direction that we were supposed to go. Whoa. Hey, uh, thanks for saving me, by the way. The last of my kind. Those mechs killed them all. I'm so sorry. Just then, a siren filled the area, and I quickly noticed that there were mechanized stations in the jungle around us. From them, crawled out mech ants. Scan the area! Come on, we have to keep moving. We began to sneak around the area, avoiding the ants at all costs, until... Skulk detected! Attack mode activate! The ant quickly transformed into a flying mech! Run! On day four, we started to run through the jungle with a group of flying mechs around us. We couldn't shake them, and the warden heart just kept beating louder and louder. We must be getting close. We finally came around the corner to see an entrance to a skulk cavern. 
There, the two of us ran in, but the mechs were still right behind. What do we do? I have an idea. Lily turned around and slammed into the cave floor, causing an erupting wall to seal off the entrance. Nice one. See, now you're saving me. We really do make a great team, don't we? Yeah, <laughs> we really do. Because of our newfound friendship, something began to happen. I became a much stronger warden tiger with five more hearts, and I can now let out my own sonic blast. Whoa, what just happened? I don't know. We continued through the cavern until we reached a secluded clearing. Around the area were six tall statues and the tiger and elephant ones were activated? Dad must have sent me here for a reason. Those are the statues of the six different warden animals of the world. The rest being the gorilla, the eagle, the snake, and the spider. So every time I unite one, I become stronger? Then I have to find the rest and fully unite the skulk jungle. On day five, we decided to build our hideout here. I helped Lily as she wanted her base at the foot of the warden elephant statue. And I then went to work on my very own home next to mine. I did everything I could to make it perfect and even made an extra room for my father as well. Where is he? He should have been here by now. Just then, I heard the strangest sounds of turkeys. Back off, you feathered freaks. I ran out of my base to see that a small blue duck was being chased by a group of turkeys. What? I used my warden boom to attack and blast the turkeys back. Coward. They all ran away as the duck came up to me. Hey, uh, thanks. Wait, do I know you? Nope. But, uh, listen, man. Those turkeys, they attacked me because they're, like, brainwashed or something. Brainwashed? I followed the blue duck until we reached a large farm. But it was currently being destroyed by a huge mechanical turkey. <laughs> Not my carrots! Did General Apex do this? That stupid, selfish bird took my upgrade car. I was gonna use it to become big and strong. But now look at me, dude. I'm sorry, man. Look, I need to find all the warden animals. I don't have time for this. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, uh, listen. I may know where the warden gorillas are. And if you help me, I can take you straight to them. On day six, the blue duck and I made a Deal. Die! Die! I've been hunting all my life, but look who's hunting now! <laughs> hey, stop this right now! Ah, a warden tiger. General Mac will be very pleased to have you taken down. Gobble, gobble, gobble. What in the world? The turkey attacked by sending out missiles to explode the crops around us. And he would even start to lay eggs? <laughs> Charge! I got these guys, dude! The duck ran in and attacked the smaller turkeys with such fury. We all continued to fight until I got a good hit of the turkey men, making him drop the upgrade core. Hey, you! On it! He ran over and grabbed the core, causing him to upgrade. Awesome! Let's finish this! The duck and I teamed up on the mechanical turkey, and in his new upgraded form, he had incredible strength! Whoa, you are one special duck. Well, lucky for you guys, the Fozo Duck is now available as an awesome plushie. Support my channel by getting the cute Day 1 Fozo, the strong, fierce Day 100 Fozo, or better yet, both. Make sure to click the link in the description to get yours before they all sell out. Thanks, guys. With the combined final hit, we were able to take down the mech turkey. Yes. All right, strangely familiar tiger. I'm a man of my word. I'll lead you right to the Warden Gorilla Empire. On day seven, I went with the now tall blue duck as he led me to the entrance of a snowy monkey kingdom. Well, 
Good luck with everything. Maybe I'll see you around. Thanks, and nice voice. I entered into the snowy kingdom, but all I saw around me were monkeys throwing bananas all through the kingdom. The apes were running around mindlessly. What's going on here? I looked over and saw a monkey that was quietly hiding behind a destroyed wall. Hey. All of the monkeys have gone wild. We have no direction. No idea what to do without the warden gorilla. Without the gorilla? What do you mean? We walked through the structure until he pointed over to the large warden gorilla encased in stone. This is horrible. Can we break him out? Yes. Yeah. We would just need the totem of healing. The thing is, there's a reason we haven't gotten it yet. The monkey led me away from the snowy kingdom and to the edge of a strange forest that was holding back the cold. In there are the creatures that stole the totem. But I'd be warned, those that have entered have never returned. On day eight, I began a search through the strange forest, but there wasn't a sign of the totem anywhere. Come on, where could it be? It was then that I heard the sound of movement in the trees above me. Uh, hello? Landing on the ground right behind me were two intimidating tree folks. Ah! They reached out and began to control the trees around me, causing walls of wood and forest to form into a maze. As an intruder to our domain, you must perish! Stay away from me! I ran away in the only direction I could, further inside of the structure. As I ran in though, more and more tree folk would come out of the wooden walls and attack me with thorns and bark. If they're defending this place like this, then the totem has to be here. As I rounded a final corner, I barely stopped myself in front of a deep pit full of a green liquid? I looked across to see the center of the maze and there was the totem of healing. All right, Fozo, you can do this. Here goes nothing. I leapt across the pit using my upgraded form to jump completely over it. Woohoo! I did it. In my celebration, I didn't even realize that I was now surrounded by all of the tree people. And now, standing between me and the totem was their tree folk elder, Shaman. Hey, I need that totem. <laughs> you want this? It has granted me and my people unimaginable power like this. Ah! The shaman began to attack me with powerful beams of pure energy. Ah! Hey, stop! The totem, it doesn't belong to you. I don't care. He continued to fight, so I knew that I had to defend myself. I used my abilities to try and gain the upper hand, but he was still extremely strong. You should care about what you're doing. Look, we all need to work together. If not, everything will be destroyed. In my anger, I unleashed my new sonic boom attack, which hit him head on, knocking him back. Ah! Please give it up or else even your people will be no more. General Apex, his army, it's rising by the second. And if the jungle doesn't unite, we don't stand a chance. Uh. Fine, take the totem. Just promised to protect us all. On days 11 to 12, I returned to the Warden Gorilla's snowy kingdom and placed the totem of healing back on its pedestal. This caused a huge wave of sonic energy to radiate throughout the area, freeing the Warden Gorilla. Whoa. I have awoken. As I stood in the presence of the gorilla, I noticed that all of the monkeys were standing at attention, awaiting the orders of their leader. He's back. He's actually back. You, you 
have freed me. I am forever in your debt. Because of his words, I felt myself begin to surge with power, causing me to grow even stronger. I gained five more hearts and now had a new ability to burrow inside of the ground. Why have you freed me? Because General Apex, he's hurting all of our homes and our people. If we don't stand together, we will never win this fight. Will you be by my side? I will, Tiger. For the wardens. After our agreement, we were heading back to my base when we noticed an imposing mechanical military base. And there, addressing his army of mech insects, was the general. Good work on taking full control of the skull jungle with all these resources. We won't be running out anytime soon. I looked around the base and saw the mechs were placing machinery all around the jungle, drawing in the skull as some sort of power source. But our mission does not end here. Not until we are the most powerful army in the world. And I will show you how we can do it. Being escorted out from deeper in the base came my father? Dad! Leave my people in this place alone! Do not speak to me like that, you pathetic animal! I am your commanding general! I will never follow you! You don't have a choice! Turn on the champ! With the flick of a lever, my father was electrocuted with a surge of energy, and it turned him into a mech tiger! I am at your service, General. With the power of the skulk, we can take control of any creature we want! What? No! I have to stop him! I have to stop this right now! I slipped into the base and ran for cover in a nearby building. Bozo, wait! I didn't listen to him. I couldn't. I have to get my dad. On days 15 to 16, I was running through the mech base, trying to find my dad. This can't be happening. I then made it into a large room, but there was nothing in sight except for a skulk feather? What is this for? As I went up and grabbed it, a whole circle of humanoid mechs formed around me. Where is my father? You are a fool to come here. I will be bringing you to the general myself. Dad, no, this isn't you. Yes. It is. My father then leapt in to attack, but bursting out of the floor was the warden gorilla. Not if I have anything to say about it, destroy them! We began to fight as the mechs would rush in and try to overpower us. I used my skulk claws, but they weren't going down without a fight. My father would take every chance he could to try and leap into attack, but thankfully, the warden gorilla kept him at Bay. In time, you will truly see the power in the mech general change. The gorilla then used a strong attack that knocked all of them back. You must get out of here. No! He started to dig in the ground. So I used my new burrow ability to dig down and out of the base. On days 17 to 18, we made it safely back to the hideout. There, a ton of the monkeys were already gathered around the foot of the activated gorilla statue. Sweet! Let's get you all settled in. I got to work gathering materials and building up the monkeys their own tribal home. Great work, Fozo. But I must say, your father siding with General Mech brings me much fear. He is the strongest of all the Warded Tigers. He didn't side with them. He was forced. We have to find a way to get him back. Why, yes, we do. I looked over at the elephant statue and saw that Lily had built up her home, a full-fledged library. Whoa, so Someone's been busy. Yes, I have. And I'm so glad you're back safe. Me too. We were even lucky enough to find this warden feather. I just don't know what it does. Ooh, no way. That has 
to belong to the Warden Eagle. And after all the research I've been doing, I may know just the place to find him. On days 19 to 21, I followed Lily as she brought me through the sandy desert biome until we saw a tall castle-like tower reaching up into the sky. But it looked abandoned? You think the Warden Eagle is here? Well, according to my research, yes. Good luck! Lily headed back to base as I started to scale up the rocks and finally make it to the tower entrance. Uh, hello? Anybody home? Just then, I got hit! Ah! I looked up to see the Warden Eagle perched above me! A Warden Tiger? Be gone! No, wait! I can't! I, I need your help! The Skulk Jungle, it's being destroyed! I don't care! I have my own problems to deal with! What? Wait, where are you going? I watched as the eagle flew up much higher into the tower. Get back here. I started to use my feline agility to catch up using the platforms. The eagle then started to shoot down sonic blasts at me. Hey, I'm not leaving. I kept dodging his attacks until we finally reached the top of the tower. I looked over to see that he had a nest, but it was empty. Look, tiger, this nest was once full of my skulk eggs, my children. They have been taken from me, and that is my main concern. I looked out over the desert and saw a path of destruction leading to the shoreline. I'm so sorry. I can help. Let me get them back. The men that stole them are dangerous, but it cannot hurt to give you a chance. If you retrieve my eggs, I will rethink your offer. On days 22 to 26, I was following the path of the hunters on the back of the Warden Eagle. He flew me across the ocean and towards a deadly looking island. And there were Vikings everywhere. The Eagle flew us down as we hid on the shoreline. My eggs, they are here. Don't worry, I'll handle this. I started to make my way through the island, avoiding the vision of the Vikings. I then saw their leader was watching over all of their work. Ah, oh, yes, men. Our latest conquest was a success. I then looked over and saw the eagle's skulk eggs were still intact near their leader. Bingo. Now to just... Uh-oh. Ah! Well, what do we have here? A wooden tiger. What is a beast like you doing on my island? I'm here for those eggs. Those? Ha <laughs> ha! We need them for the morning when we have our breakfast of champions. Are you serious? I use my burrow ability to quickly dig down and out of their trap. If you're such a champion, let me put that to the test. Oh, ho, I like this beast. Okay, tiger, follow me. The Viking led me over to a large ruined arena that was overgrown with the forest. The deal is, if you can beat me at our hunting game, then you can take the eggs. But if you lose, I'll kill you where you stand and use your parts for my act. Do you accept? Yeah, deal. All right, challengers. There are five different dummy targets spread throughout the course. Whoever takes down three of them wins. You will regret challenging me. Ready? Begin! We took off into the ruins as we split up to find the dummies. Come on, come on. Oh no, he already scored? I gotta keep up. I searched to find one of the targets up in a thick tree. There, I used my burrow ability to dig up and through. And with one hit, yes. But as I got down, 
Oh, come on. If he gets one more, he wins. In my panic, I felt my senses heightened. I used my warden tendrils to search my surroundings and found the next target through a wall. I slashed through it right as I saw the Viking trying to as well. All tied up. The game's not over yet. We both looked over at a nearby hilltop and saw the fifth and final target. I gotta get there first. I quickly started to run towards it, trying to outpace him. Yes, yes, no. In a giant leap, the Viking crashed down onto me with an attack charged with lightning. Knock it off. I will not lose. He started to attack me with everything he had, but I knew what I was fighting for. I struck him with a powerful sonic boom, knocking him back and stunning him. With the opening, I dashed over to the final target. That's the game. The Warden Tiger wins. I did it! On days 30 to 32, I went back to the Viking's camp, and the defeated Viking approached me. I would not be Viking without my honor. Go ahead, take the eggs. Awesome! I happily grabbed the eggs and was now about to go back to the Warden Eagle when, out of nowhere, storming in the camp was General Apex and his army. What is the meaning of this? Without a second thought, the General blasted the Viking with a single shot. Take everything they have! Hey! Oh, is this the small baby Warden Tiger? I saw those days ago. I am not small anymore. Stop doing this and let my father go. Never. He's helping me accomplish my dream and it will not be ruined. Dream? What dream? You're a psycho. Rawr! In another explosive attack, the general blew me back. Yeah! All my life, I've been treated like a joke. Told that I wouldn't amount to anything. But now, that is all about to change. And there is nothing that anyone can do about it. He was about to blast me again in his rage. But the Warden Eagle swooped down in front of me. Hop on! I jumped onto his back. And we quickly flew away from the island. No! Run now! But in time, you will see what I can truly do! On days 33 to 35, we safely landed back on the Warden Eagle's tower. I went over and placed the Skulk eggs back in their nest. Oh, thank goodness my family is now safe. I owe you everything, Fozo. Because of his words, I began to upgrade into a much stronger Warden Tiger. I gained five more hearts and could unleash a sonic roar. Awesome. But as I looked around, I noticed how unsuitable the tower would be for the eagle's family. Hey, it's not safe for you here anymore. You need to come with me. On days 36 to 39, I made it back to base with the warden eagle and saw that his statue was activated. Yes, only two more to go. With that, I built up the eagle and his eggs, their very own nest home. I cannot express how happy I am to have a safe place to stay. Hey, thank you, Fozo. Anytime. All of the Skulk Jungle animals have to work together now more than ever. It was then that I heard one of the monkeys going crazy. Ah, what the? I ran over to see that all of the water in the base was a gross purple. And because of it, the plant life all around was dying. Oh no, is the water polluted? I followed the stream out of my base and saw that it led to a shoreline. Far off in the distance was an oil rig dumping a constant stream of pollution into the water. That's what's causing it? I gotta shut it down. On days 40 to 44, I started to scout out the oil rig and noticed that there were tall rocks leading to it. But patrolling the air were some of General Apex's drones. He's running this place? I can't be seen. I began jumping from rock to rock, using my burrow ability to dig down and hide when the drones passed overhead. That was close. I slowly pushed forward and made the final jump onto the rig. After a bit of searching, I found the source of pollution and used my abilities to take it down, changing the water back. Perfect. 
But as I said that, I heard a familiar voice from inside. Secure the tigers now. Dad? I stealthily made my way deeper into the building and saw my father talking to one of the mechs. My son is the only warden tiger left, but he's not a threat because the only person who knows the whereabouts of the warden spider is me. <laughs> What was that? I followed the noise into a separate room to see cages full of warden tigers. My people, I gotta get you guys out of here. But just then, hello, son. On days 45 to 47, I was face to face with my father. Dad, please listen to me. I'm your son. No, what you are is a risk. You think you'll ever be as strong as me? I was a king! He leapt in to attack me, but I dodged out of the way! You will never live up to my name! That's not true! We began to clash using both our Sculpt Claws and Sonic Boom Attacks. So I tried to use all my abilities to knock some sense into him. He was very skilled at fighting them, and it felt like he was dodging every one of my hits. Please, stop! I unleashed an attack straight at him, and he dodged out of the way. But because of this, the cage burst open. Guys, run now! All of the tigers flooded out, heading for the exit. But the last one stopped and turned around. There may be a way to save your father, Fozo, but you need to come with us, quick! I leapt past my father and sprung towards the exit with the other tigers. Get back here! On days 48 to 52, me and the other warden tigers were sprinting through the skulk jungle with my father following behind this way we finally made it through the trees and in to the tiger kingdom across the area was a clearing where the other warden tigers circled around a strange totem quickly we need him to be in the center i jumped up onto the large totem and turned around to see my father burst into the clearing there you are you thought you could run away never he charged in and tried to pounce onto me. Now! I leapt down just as my father landed on the totem. Immediately, there was a flash of blue aura around my father as each and every one of the tigers channeled their strength. Then, in a final blast of energy, my father had returned to normal. Dad, is that you? S son, I'm so sorry. I don't know what came over me. I didn't mean anything I said back there and- Dad, it's okay. I'm just glad you're all right. But now, we all need your help. I need to know exactly where the Warden Spider is. On days 53 to 56, I followed my father's directions as they led me right to the entrance of a web-filled ancient cave. Oh yeah, this has got to be the right place. I ventured deeper in, only to see that the tunnel was blocked by a mechanical wall? Oh no, did the mechs beat me here? I tried to use my burrow ability, but it was no use. I can't get through. Now what? Then, in the corner of my eye, there was a small firelight coming from a nearby tunnel. That's odd. I went around the corner to see a tiny warden spider. Uh, hello? Ah! Ah! Uh, don't scare me like that. We thought you were one of those stupid mechs that captured my queen. The main warden spider. I had to save her. But how? How, how do I get through that wall? All right, buddy. If you can promise to free the queen, I can definitely help you out. We walked back over to the mechanical wall, and the spider showed me a very small crack in it. This pink a little. The spider lunged out and bit me. Ah! What did you do? Uh, uh, I'm tiny, dude. Relax. It's only temporary. We both snuck through the crack and appeared on the other side to see the Warden Spider Ancient City. And there, in the center of it all, was a machine hooked up to the restrained Warden Spider Queen. That can't be good. On days 57 to 59, I went through the city and crawled up to the Spider Queen. 
a tiger? I'm gonna get you out of here. I was about to unleash a sonic boom, but the queen called out at me. If you destroy the machine from here, it'll blow everything up and I'll go with it. What is a tiger warden doing here anyway? Look, I'm here to help you. Suddenly, the machine charged with power and started to sap energy from her. Go! The, the mechs! They built this thing to take my skulk webs from their creations. Y you must find the power source. There, you can shut it down and get me out. Got it. I'll be back. I followed the strange machinery deeper under the ancient city until I reached another room with the power core. Found it. Just when I was about to destroy it, though, an armored figure dropped down in front of me. Stay away from this machine. On days 60 to 63, the Mech Knight instantly came in to attack. He would swing his massive sword around and use his shield to bash my head in. Ah! I fought back with my skulk abilities, trying to keep him off of me. My attacks didn't seem to do much though, but they would at least push him back which gave me enough space to shoot at the power core. Ah! With the strongest sonic boom I've ever done, I broke the core in one hit. Yes! No! The general will not be happy. I must kill you! The knight rushed towards me, and I didn't know how much more I could take until out of the darkness came the freed warden spider queen. Stay away from him. With our combined efforts, me and the Spider Queen were able to take the night down. We did it. You did it. You really freed me. And for that, I'll help you in your quest. Because of her words, I upgraded. I turned into a stronger Warden Tiger, gained five more hearts, and now could cause Skulk Shards to erupt from the floor. Yes. On days 64 to 68, I returned to my base with all the warden tigers and spiders. And now the spider statue was activated. I got to work building up a web-filled home for the spiders around their entire statue. I'm so thankful for the opportunity to get back at those mechs. Yeah, we can take them down together. I then took the time to build more homes for my warden tiger people. When I was finally done, I noticed my father was standing in in front of his home. I see you made me this. Yeah, I did. A long time ago. I'm just happy that you finally get to see it and be safe. My father and I walked around, looking over the whole base together. Son, one day, all of them will follow you. You've already gained their trust, and I know that you'll be a fantastic leader. One can say a better king than I ever was. Thanks, Dad. That means a lot coming from you. As I was talking to my father, I heard Lily running throughout the base. No, 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 no! Lily, what's going on? The, the, the jungle, our home, it's burning! What? On day 69 to 73, my father and I hurried out of the base to see a massive wildfire in the jungle around us. Everything was burning. We ran through the trees and followed the destruction to see that the cause of it was General Apex. Look at what you forced me to do. Forced? You have to stop this. The general shot out another wave of flames. All of my plans have gone smoothly until you, you just kept prying and prying. So now I've had a change of heart. I'm going to burn this entire jungle to the ground and let all the animals left be under the control of my mix. No, the general charged in as me and my father met him in the center. We fought using every ability we could to stop him, but he was still far too strong. In an explosive attack, I was blown back by his missile. Ah! Don't you dare touch him. My dad started to take on the general all by himself. He unleashed another wave of flames that burned right through my father, though. Ah! But as he did, my dad leapt through them and slashed right through his armor, causing something to malfunction. Ah! No! I'll be back to take all you out! I gathered just enough strength to stand close to my dad, but he looked even weaker than I was. Son, we weren't strong enough, but you can be. You have to find the final warden animal, Warden Snake. 
Dad, why are you talking like this? Because it's up to you now, son. Be their king. Lead them all. Dad! Dad! No! I was overcome with grief, but I knew I had to stop General Apex so that no one would have to go through this kind of pain ever again. I reflected on all I had accomplished. I have to save all of the animals in the jungle for my father. I set out and gathered materials to build my dad a glorious monument in the kingdom. One that the warden tigers and all of the other jungle animals could remember him by. I promise I will make you proud, dad. Bozo, Bozo, where are you? Lily? She came up to me and saw the monument I built. Oh no, he, he didn't, did he? Oh, I'm so sorry. I know that. Now more than ever, General Apex needs to be stopped. That's why I came looking for you. I think I know where the final warden animal is. On day 78 to 80, I traveled across the Skulk jungle with Lily until we made it out of the trees and into the desolate home of the Warden Snake. There wasn't a soul in sight, just giant skulls and bones everywhere. This place looks like it was hit the hardest. That's because it was. Appearing from behind one of the skulls was the snake. I knew you'd come here eventually. So, you know of our case to stop the mech army. Will you join us? I have no such plans to. Who do you think you are to stop them? You are to keep the ruler. I am more than worthy enough to lead the warden animals, and I'll prove it to you for everyone and my father. Very well, Tiger. Show me what you've got. On days 81 to 85, the Warden Snake threw his spiked tail at me to strike. I used my feline agility to dodge out of the way. After, I rushed in. Using all of my abilities, I gained. My Skulk Claws cut through him, and my Sonic Shards attack to strike him constantly. I said, show me. The snake then hit me back with his powerful tail. He's no joke. The mechs eliminated my people long ago. So I ask again, who are you to stop them? I thought back to the beautiful Tiger Kingdom and all the memories of my father. I am the Warden Tiger King. Ah! With the strongest attack I could muster, I struck at the Warden Snake, causing him to be defeated. I yield. You have proven your worth. I will fight for the jungle. Because of this, I felt all the skulk running through my body, surging with more power than I'd ever felt. I gained 10 more hearts and could now rain down sonic blasts from the sky. I was truly the most powerful tiger ever, the Warden Tiger King. On days 86 to 90, I was rushing back through the Skulk jungle with Lily and the Warden Snake, noticing the flames were only getting worse. Bozo, look! Over near the entrance to our hideout was a spider mech. I jumped in, and because I was so powerful now, I took him out in one hit. Sweet! But then I looked up and into the base, and everyone was under attack. The army was overrunning the other warden animals because none of them were working together. No, I rushed in and began to fight the mech army, trying to defend our home. Finally, I pounced onto the final one, fully ending the attack. But our base was heavily destroyed, except for the animal statues, which were all activated. Okay, everyone, gather around. On days 91 to 94, I got everyone gathered up inside of our hideout. Guys, how did they find us? Well, the spiders were supposed to guard the entrance. What? Well, maybe if the eagle was a better scout, we would have seen them from a mile away. Stop it. What are you guys doing? Now, more than ever, do we as the warden animals need to fight as one? The tiger is right. General Apex, he took control of our home because of our division. But now is our time to all finally work together. We all care about this jungle and it's time that we take it back. 
I'm ready. Hey. Okay, everyone, here's the plan. On days 95 to 99, the warden animals and I made it outside of the mech's jungle base as General Apex stood on top of its walls. Is this supposed to intimidate me? We are here to stop you. I don't even want your resources anymore. I just want you gone. As he said this, a swarm of his mech army charged out of the base towards us. All right, everyone, remember, fight together we all began to fight using our abilities to help one another the warden snake used his tail to stop the mechs from hurting me while the gorilla jumped in the way of the missiles that were gonna hit the spider and the eagle's warden boom took out a whole group of them surrounding lily whoa thanks hey bozo i'm ready do it! I ran over to the walls as Lily made a huge wall of skulk to boost me over it. Go get him, tiger! We'll deal with the army out here. I jumped down into the base and there in the center was General Apex all alone. On day 100, I was finally face to face with the general. It's over! Your army is destroyed! <laughs> is that so? Well, they are just tools anyway. The real weapon is nice! The general shot out a volley of rockets from his mech, exploding everything around me. Ah! We continued to fight as I would constantly strike at him with my sonic shards. Take that! Ah! Your presence will be your end! He then unleashed a wave of flames from his flamethrower. This is your end! Apex, we kept fighting until finally I got in close and landed a strong skulk claw. No, not again. How did you? My father taught me well, and this is for him. With one final attack, I hit the general head on, successfully taking him down. And with that, the skulk jungle can now finally live united and in peace.